Hello, good evening, folks. I am Mark W, and it is Thursday evening. That means it's time for Mark W plays old games on a Thursday. What an inventive title! And today I'm going to focus on a single game. Mostly on this stream, I will play like a whole console, like all NES games or all well Commodore 64 games or what have you. Once in a while, I like to focus on a game that. Uh, you know, it, it deserves time to breathe. <laughs> it's a game that could, you know, a game, like a game that could take, you know, a couple hours or what have you. Uh, like when I did Mule in the past. Um, and today, so, just for some reason, this game popped into my mind. Lords of Conquest. And I remember to haven't played that game in ages. You know, even though I, I play a lot of old games via emulation, this is not a game that I played in recent years at all. I would say probably the last time I played it was, um, if I had to wager a guess, early 90s. And so I'm quite rusty at it, but it's pretty cool. Um, it is a, uh, well, let's, let's drag over Wikipedia. What a better way to explain uh, the game. Basically, it is, uh, well, this is its cover art. This is one of those Electronic Arts games, by the way. It was published by Electronic Arts, where they have like kind of these... Uh, almost like a vinyl record album sleeve, although they're smaller than vinyl record album. And they usually have fancy art and stuff. Usually what they're doing is they're they're publishing on behalf of a small developer. In this case, the developer was Eon Productions. Now, uh, Eon Production is a small company of a few nifty dudes, and um, they have mostly made board games, but they, they branched out into computer games a little bit. This might actually be the only uh computer game they've done don't quote me on that i could probably dig into it through wikipedia here but i'm not going to do that now um if you look at the map here it's almost risk like so that might look maybe not super exciting it's a really well done game though and it's and it's uh it plays a lot quicker than risk it has uh more elements going on um you don't actually keep track of individual armies you just kind of own a territory or not there's resources to gather uh you can spend the resources etc I don't want to go into too into it right now because I'm actually going to review the rules because you kind of have to for a game like this. But a couple of other interesting things to point out is um, here's one, Don Daglo. Uh, I honestly don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, so sorry if I am not. Uh, he's the producer on this game, and I I know him mostly from his Intellivision game Utopia, that is one of my favorite games ever. Um, also. I'm actually, uh, I actually have an in progress uh, to learn in television development. I'm actually kind of making a remake of Utopia as we speak. Not not at the specific moment, but in general. Hey, Ryan, how's it going? And who else? Eon Software. Yeah, again, they're a small board game group. Well, not the, not the software, but uh, Eon Production, which you see here. And uh, Peter Olaka, Jack Kitteridge, Bill Elberly. I, I actually have interacted with Peter quite a bit. Because he makes a uh, a favorite game of mine, a favorite board game of mine called Cosmic Encounter, and I happen to have a couple of sets of that <laughs> handy. This is one version of the board game Cosmic Encounter, the game that breaks its own rules. I got I got this one in the early '90s. This set is from the early '90s, or maybe like '93 or so, published by Mayfair Games. And I just thought I would show this because I don't know, it's just fun to to point out those connections. Um, but yeah, this is one of my favorite board games, Cosmic Encounter, all time. And I'm a big board game nut. I have over 100 board games. But Cosmic Encounter is near the top. That was an early 90s edition. In 2008, another edition of Cosmic Encounter came out. And that looks like this. Um, yeah, again, one of my favorite games. And this new edition, you know, cleaned up a bunch of, you know, clunky things with the old version. Introduced new elements and improved rule sets and things like that. And just thought it's a kind of almost like a small world kind of a thing there. But yeah, what... In the late 90s, uh, they made Cosmic Encounter online, so I used to actually join that quite a bit. And Peter Olatka himself would play, so I actually played a lot of games with Peter Olatka online that way. Yes, I did get a haircut. Thanks for noticing, Ryan. <laughs> uh, what else is there to say about this? I don't know the programmer, Ted Um This is, oh yeah, one thing I forgot to point out is this is actually based on one of Eon's board games. A 1982 board game called Borderlands, which I never played, and I considered getting it when they they actually remade that maybe 10 years ago. Um, but you know, I'm always I always have this battle going on. Do I really need another 
board game in my collection. And also for their revamped Borderlands board game, they decided to set it in a steampunk setting because maybe 10 years ago that was kind of the rage. Everything had to be steampunk. And I was kind of a little turned off to, to it. You know, also I kind of, in general, have been, you know, maybe in the past 10 years or so trying to resist buying every game that looks cool. Um, so yeah, I wound up never actually getting the board game version of Borderlands. But that's what this is. This is the computerized version of Borderlands from 1982. And this game itself is from 86, the uh, Lords of Conquest, that is. So I thought I'd flip through the rules a little bit just because for a game like this, it's good to at least have a basic idea of what you're doing. I, I feel like I could probably pick it up pretty quickly. And the rule book's only eight pages. This is looking up uh, on archive.org, by the way. So let's flip through this a bit. All right, Lords of Conquest. So they, they use the same rule book here for the Apple family as well as the Commodore 64 and Atari. I had the Commodore 64 version back in the day. We don't need these annoying technical things about plug the joystick into port two. Actually, I need to know that. I am in port two, okay. And then they say, you know, type this exact uh, <laughs> uh, incantation to get the game to load. But main menu, I'll figure that out. Start a new game. Yeah, this game is, one cool thing about it is it's quite configurable. Um, although it's sort of like a risk again, although I think improved upon risk in a lot of ways, you can configure a lot of stuff in it. Like, well, number of players is kind of nothing special, but level of play, that's beginner, intermediate, advanced, or expert. That's how many elements are in the game. Like, uh, if you play beginner, which I'll probably start off with, you only have gold as one of your resources that you can gather and, and, uh, purchase things with. But as you go up, there's more, um, things like coal, and timber, and I can't remember what else. Uh, you can choose resource abundance, just how much of all the resources there are. Is there a lot of stuff, or is it really scarce, basically? Um, cities to win. Yeah, and the goal of this game is to build enough cities to, to win in your controlled territories. So that's one of the things that makes it you know, very uh, flexible in terms of how long do you want the game to run. Six cities might take, uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but to give you an example, six cities might take, let's say, 90 minutes or two hours, and three cities might take 30 minutes. I'm just giving you a very rough ballpark concept. I might be totally <laughs> off base with those exact numbers. But it's very configurable. I think it's super cool in that respect. Let's go to the next page. Yeah, there's more configurable stuff. Element of chance is actually quite a big um, option that you have. You can set the, abundant, the level of chance to, uh, I think, just low, medium, and high. Actually, there's a, I think there's a no chance option too. And that, what that basically means is that, you know, the game adds up your forces and that's determined by things like how many territories are adjacent to the, the defending territory that you choose to attack as well as do you have a horse, do you have a weapon, etc. And it, you know, it adds up a total of something like seven to four. You could actually play it in such that whoever has the higher total just wins. That's called no chance. So that way it's more like a highly strategic chess-like game because there's no element of chance involved. And you can also, you know, have, uh, I think, low, medium, and high elements of chance. High means, you know, you could lose easily even if you out, greatly outnumber the opponent. It's very un unpredictable. Um, to give you an example, you know, again, made up, it's like uh, maybe if you had, you know, seven to four odds and uh, you played with high chance, it's like, well, everybody roll 10 dice and and you add seven to your total and you add 40 yards well with that many dice in play it could, it could be anyone's game but the, the guy with seven would have more or you know it would be leaning in his favor a little bit anyway i'm kind of just making up an example it doesn't necessarily work just like that but just to illustrate the concept keep going we have uh music well yeah that, that, could, that just to comment on that a little bit more that element of chanting kind of fundamentally transforms the game and uh it's very interesting, I think. Difficulty scale. This is for a single player. How tough the computer opponent is. I'm probably going to play with, I don't know. I feel like I can totally stop level one probably, but I might start with that anyway. And then map selection is, uh, yeah, you have all these pre-built maps you can choose from. As well as, um, you can see just a glance at them. Some of them are real life. I guess they're all, no, they're not all real life. Some of them are made up. I think Borderlands is the one from the original board game, which is a made up map. Some of the others are made up too, like Riverland. Uh, there's like a whole world map you can play on, where it's kind of a very zoomed out global um, scale map. But that's pretty cool, I thought. You can just play all these different uh, 
map, the 20 different maps built in, and you can even build your own. There's a map maker where you can design your own map. So it's a lot of, that introduces like a lot of replayability, I think. And when I was a kid, I loved anything that let me construct my own levels, maps, adventures, whatever. So I would, I would spend a lot of time with this map editor. And Ryan said, I wish I had been more into computer gaming when I was younger. Uh, yeah, you mostly played consoles, right, Ryan? Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah, I forgot about this part. This is cool, too. You can, have the, you can have the computer generate a unique map. And, you know, you wait around a while. It's a Commodore 64. But uh, I think it just takes a couple of minutes. And then uh, you have a randomly generated map. What else? You can define your own unique map. Yeah, I think with this one is um. Sorry, I'm thinking for my is this separate from the editor? I think this one is. Okay, I don't want to waste too much time just while the gears in my brain process. But it might be that you can't actually hand hand draw a map, but you can give it parameters like the amount of water, the amount of territories, the amount uh, whether islands are present, things like that. The islands can be a real kind of game changer. You'll, you might see once we actually play the game. Anyway, I don't want to dwell too much on that, but I guess I guess you can only. I could have sworn there was like a hand, like hand draw a map kind of thing, but maybe it's just that you you specify the parameters and it generates it for you. Anyway, it's pretty neat. Uh, moving on right along though, um, <clears throat> there the phases in a turn is development, production, trading, shipment, and conquest. Development means you invest in new cities and weapons. It begins in the second year, and it's the first phase of all subsequent years. That's development. Production, you just make stuff. It just kind of happens automatically. Trading, you can trade resources with players. Uh, since I'm playing against the computer, it's just going to be one-on-one, -on -one, which is kind of more limited. And, you know, it's always fun to play a game like this with other human beings. But, you know, I don't have a human being to, uh, <laughs> to play with. I have no friends. Uh, shipment, yeah, so you can move stuff around. Like, uh, you always have a stockpile in this game. The stockpile is where all your resources are physically located in the map. In most games like this, you just kind of have the resources, right? You put them, like, off the board or whatever, and you just have this much money and this much timber or whatever. Um, you know, think of, like, an RTS, maybe. You have this much gold and this much wood. But in this game, it's actually present somewhere on the map. And if an enemy manages, manages to raid your territory that has a stockpile, they just take all your stuff. It's pretty devastating when that happens. And you can uh, lastly uh, attack at the end of your turn. That's called the conquest phase. And you take turns at the beginning claiming territories, and you just keep choosing them until you've, uh, to, till, you know, all the all the um, territories have been claimed. Beginning the game, yeah, they use the difficult, uh, not difficulty level, but just this is this is just the levels of play that introduce, uh, they gradually introduce different elements. It, for beginner, it's only two two resources available: gold and horses. Intermediate: gold, horses, iron, coal, and timber. Advanced: same, but also boats. Expert: same, but also you can move your horses, weapons, and boats during the shipment phase. So we we don't even have the shipment phase unless we play expert. Um, okay, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I I kind of want to start at beginner, but I wonder if that almost might be too simple for me because I've played it before. Eh, I'll just roll with it. Why not? Difficulty scale here. Are, uh, what is this about? The table below shows the nine levels of difficulty you can select for a one-player game against the computer. Uh, okay, so that I guess this is the only thing that differs in the in the um, difficulty level, right? So if I pick difficulty one, which is easy, when we're each choosing one by one which territories to claim, I get to pick first, and I get four bonus. Also, I get to go first. You get a little bit of an advantage if you go first, I guess. I guess it makes sense but as you as you increase the level you know you can see it's more balanced and all the way up to nine in which the computer has the same bonuses that you would have on level one note the computer <laughs> i forgot about this the computer can take as long as two minutes to think about its next move most of the time the, the move the computer makes after 10 seconds will be the same as the move it makes after two minutes Press your joystick button or spacebar after 10 seconds to limit the computer's thinking. <laughs> yeah, you can force it to, to commit to a, <laughs> its decision. And it's just kind of telling you that it rarely even differs, even if you let it think for a full two minutes. I think in retrospect, you know, 
maybe this is just coming from a 2023 perspective. Nobody wants to wait for the computer to take that long. They should have capped it at 10 seconds probably. But that's what it is. They can always press the button to force the computer to commit to something. And Ryan had a comment. He said, when were you, when were you first online? I don't think I was online until the mid-90s. Uh... I didn't really do it myself until the early 90s, I'd say. But in my household, I always remember, like, even in the very early days, uh, my, bro- my older brother and my dad fiddling with uh, our very first modem was um, an acoustic modem, which only supported 300 baud or 300 bits per second, whatever you want to call it. And it was like, it was like a, you, put the, um, you put your phone handset on the, <laughs> the device. Acoustic means that it was actually using sound that traveled through a little bit of air so it would have it would use your phone it would it would submit the sound to your your ear part earpiece whatever you call it and to send data up it would go through the speaker I, where you would talk if you were talking on the phone so it would actually it, it's kind of bizarre to think about but that's what it did and that i i, I remember basically always having uh modems in the house and stuff and my older brother calling all kinds of bbs's and, you know, leaving it on overnight to, to download a game. And my dad would explore things like that, too. We used uh, a little bit of those early online services like uh, Prodigy. I think we used CompuServe a little bit. But at the time, it didn't have, like, a GUI. So, you know, I was, like, five years old or something. It wasn't really interesting to me. Um, yeah, there were a couple others, too. Um, yeah. Good times. <laughs> uh but yeah, by the time I actually started using modems, though, I had a 2400 board. Anyway, uh, game parameters. Uh, we kind of lost, kind of talked about this, I think. Oh, these are, okay, these are actually additional settings. Uh, yeah, resources. Set in the beginner's level, you can set the quantity of available resources. With, I guess basically low, medium, and high, or something like that. Cities to win, we touched upon. If you choose uh, three, it's a fast game. Six, it'll take a while. And the levels of chance we touched upon. Um, yeah, okay. So for, I guess it's more than just the attacking, though. It says it has to do with horses, too. But, yeah, with low chance, whoever is the stronger force wins the battle, period. There's no, like, well, I might get lucky. So that's, to me, that's, like, I don't like it, actually. I, I, I like there to be some element of uncertainty. But you could argue that it probably has a lot of strategy if you really want to play kind of a tighter strategic game. Anyway, I'll skip over the other medium and high ones. Resources. Uh, blah, blah. You can move resources except in the beginner level. You can. Oh, that, this is like during the setup. You can like say, I don't like the way these things are, are placed. You can like move them around, something like that. Anyway, then we do territory selection, which we kind of talked about. Yearly phases. Uh, I'm gonna go move. I'm gonna move a little faster so we can get started. But um, development costs are probably worth looking at, and this is depending on level one, two, three, or four. It gets if we're playing. What do they call them? Like beginner, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Beginner, intermediate, whatever, expert. Uh, so in level one, everything only costs gold because that's the only uh, resource they give you. And so it's two gold for a weapon and four gold for a city. And, you know, we don't have to go over every combination. But later, yeah, I remember this mostly. You want to kind of diversify in the resources when you're playing the real game, which I consider to be level two plus, because um, it costs one each to make a city. And the cities are what you need to win. And now my friend is pinging me, so I got to shut that, shut that off. I always have my chat on. Uh, at the wrong time. Anyway, per, we'll skip over the rest of development. It's kind of saying useless things, I think. Um, b- 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 production. Yeah, you choose where your stockpile is going to locate. Be located at the beginning. Again, this is your treasury. You got to guard it with your life. If anybody claims your stockpile, they get all your stuff. It's very devastating. You can trade, but that doesn't apply in a me versus computer two-player game. Shipment, that's only for the expert difficulty level. But basically, you can move up your, your horses, weapons, and boats to put them into to position for battle. And uh, yeah, the, ho- the boats let you um, do a lot of crazy trickery. Like, you can 
instantly move them from one coastal area to another to join in for, a, for an attack and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Maybe I'll just play like four games, one of each difficulty, if I can fit it into a reasonable time frame. <laughs> uh, the attack, they give you the four. This is the math of how it adds up the forces. Remember I said like the four strength could be like seven to four or something like that. Well, it's one point for the home territory. So that's for the defender, I guess. One point for each adjacent territory. Oh, this, this whole thing here is for the def defense. Defense. This is how the defense is tallied up. One point for a horse. One point for each adjacent horse. Two points for a city in the home territory. Two points for each adjacent city. Uh, three points for a weapon in the home territory. Three points for each weapon in adjacent territories. Two points for each boat in home territories. And I guess you can imagine the weapons are something like artillery or cannons. It's kind of vague. It's just called a weapon. The whole game is pretty abstract. Although I guess it's set in an era where horses would actually help you fight so and this is mentioned for like the third time about the chant actually it might be worth going over a little bit of this it says uh for medium see the rules for low chance except ties are decided at random so i think it might still be the case that if i'm like if i have five versus my opponent's four forces i would still win all the time I think that's what it's telling me. I like high. I like high. That's fun. <laughs> high is everything is subject to chance. Yeah, I'm probably going to go with that. Okay, allies. Yeah, this is another fun thing. If you have multi if you're playing multiplayer instead of just two player, you can have your uh, the other players ally with you to add their support into your total. Uh, you can, as the attacker, you can bring forces. Which means you pull in like horses and weapons and stuff. A horse can join in from two territories away. I think they can even pick up a weapon. A weapon can only move into an adjoining territory. Yeah, well, keep moving across, move, moving through the rules. Boats are only an advanced and expert. They can join too, I think. No, but they can help you attack non-adjacent territories. You bring all the stuff over by boat. Uh, okay, then it talks about the map maker. And to win, you keep going until one player has the specified number of cities required to win. So if you play with three, then as soon as you get three, uh, you win. Is at the end of the year, at the end of the turn, the year each each turn of the year. So I guess you you have a chance of you know you don't win immediately. So if you have three and another player has two and it's three to win, if the other player has a chance to go to take their turn, they could tie it up with you. All right, so that's that's the rest of the rules. I'll probably be referring back to this. I'll just shove it off to the side, though. So why don't we load up the game? I probably should have started the loading while reading the instructions because it could take a little while. All right. Looks like I lost a viewer while reading through the manual. <laughs> Someone's like, this is too much. I'm out of here. And here are the credits. It's amazing that this could be the entire credits for a game, essentially. Not that's not possible these days. <laughs> well, unless you make like a very small indie game, I guess it's possible. And this is a cracked version. I just so I could play it today. Does doesn't mean no good to to buy a legit copy on a five and a quarter inch disc in 2023. So I'm gonna use uh what's called the warp speed mode. Does that's not like I did it wrong. Uh. <laughs> there we go. Our tree to a nice little tune. What I like is um, this guy's about to charge into battle, but he has this big wall that is the title, the game title, in his way. And this guy could probably pick him off with his bow. But what's he doing? He's kind of just leaning on the bow. It's like a long bow, I think. He's just leaning on, or just holding it to the side. Instead of actually aiming at the enemy. Actually, maybe they're joining forces to attack the wall here, because that's kind of it's kind of annoying that wall. It's, I think it's going all the way down here too. Look, it's snaking its way down. <laughs> the title moved away before I could finish drawing. So I'm going to go into warp speed mode. Warp speed. Warp speed too slow. Let's go to ludicrous speed. 
Ryan says, where's Arturo? I want to tell him my wife and I are eating pea protein taco meat tonight. <laughs> he might be here. It says there are three concurrent viewers. We had four before. Okay, let's turn off warp speed. Oop, shoot. I just <laughs> pressed the, sa the same hot key to put in warp speed for most things is to close the window, so I just lost my YouTube console window. So let me get back into there. Okay, we're still good, I hope. That, inc that includes the chat. All right, so we're back. All right, oh, uh, yeah, so let's get into it. You can watch the, maybe I'll watch the demo quick just because it's been so long. Do, 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 do. Am I picking? No. The computer is picking North America 1. Oh, shoot. Okay. Oh, that's the stream, folks. <laughs> Actually, hold on. I can probably do something. I can probably fix it. Uh, i trying to think what I should do. For, I'm going to try just playing the game myself and skipping the demo and see if that works. If not, I am going to uh, try different disk images of the game. Let's go into warp speed all the way. We are in warp speed mode. You don't, you don't get to hear the little ditty because we're in warp speed. Okay, any moment now. Any moment now. Please don't break. Well, okay, cool. All right, let's try starting a new game. Will it fail spectacularly as well? All right, let's pick our options first. Uh, number of players, one. I'm assuming that means, um, yeah, there's an AI if I pick one. Game level, I'll start with beginner. Uh, that means only gold and nothing fancy. Horses and cities are all I can make. There's no weapons, boats, no other resources like timber and whatever. Resource abundance, we can only do medium or low with just gold, I guess. There's no high. Cities to win, yeah, let's leave it simple because I kind of want to be able to climb through the difficulty levels, like just play a quick beginner once to get the hang of the game again. Keep moving. I'm going to do high chance because I like that. Uh, difficulty scale, I feel like one is like almost unfairly easy probably. But hey, we're just getting used to it again, so I'll just leave it at that. It's fine. Map selection. Here's the thing. I'm scared it's not going to work. Yeah, look at this. You can choose a personal map, have a computer generate a unique map, or define your own unique map. Here we go. So the demo tried to load the first one, North America 1 or whatever, and it crashed. So I'm a little scared I'm going to have the same problem. Here we go. I'm going to try it. Oh! Is it working though? Despite that error? No. Let's try Middle East. Damn it. Okay. Well, let's try a different disk image. What can I say? Sorry to do this live. I figured, you know, just testing that the image works and gets to the title screen, that I can move the joystick around and press the buttons would be good enough. But of course, I was wrong. But, but fortunately, I have multiple versions of this, so hopefully one of them works. I will just keep cycling through them and go into warp speed every time. Sorry about this. Now I got two viewers. Yay! Everybody's like, after this. Arturo is probably eating his real meat tacos right now, Ryan. He doesn't want your puny pea protein. Puny pea protein. Okay. Let's do the same thing. Quickly go through this. To medium, three, high chance, and go. Try to load North America one again. Is it working? Hey! That's my North America one. Uh, sorry, Ar if you are here, Arturo, I have to apologize that all you get from Mexico is uh, Baja, California, and uh, whatever this area is. <laughs> and for Canada, yeah, you only get the places where people actually live in Canada anyway, right? 
All right, use this map, yes. Okay, so I guess I am blue against my opponent who is red. Uh, yeah, so this is the territory selection. I'm going to one by one choose territories. Um, these things that look like, uh, I don't know what they look like. They look like a, a land mine or, or something, <laughs> or like one of those water mines, whatever you call them, sea mines. But it's actually a pasture that produces horses. And these rectangles with the four lines coming out of them, that's gold. It's supposed to represent like shiny gold bars. So really, those are the things you want to focus on claiming. It's important to get those. Uh, at the top here, this, this looks like a nice cluster. However, the computer is probably not going to let me just snatch them all up. But right now, I'm deciding mostly, do I want to get, you know, start with a, a gold or a horse? I'm going to go with, I could also start down here, but I feel like this top is better. I'm going to start with the horse because having the horsepower will help me bully them and take their gold. Oh, I didn't mean, mean to click that one. Let's see what he does. Oh, he's going to that, to that southwest area. Okay. So now I will take, uh, I'll take this gold here. He takes that gold. All right. We're going to be pretty balanced with one. I think we're going to be pretty balanced with one pasture each and two gold each, actually. That's not bad, I guess. Okay, now we just have to take uh, all the plane. Oh, there's another gold to the, to the east. Ah, the question is, do I want to snatch that up or kind of build up my area? Because it's good to have a lot of adjacent areas, a lot of uh, like contiguous areas. I'm going to grab the gold, though, and try to connect them later, hopefully. So maybe now I will build up, try to connect the two. All right, I didn't want him to get that, but he did. So maybe I can get this one, though. Okay. Uh, maybe here next. Mm, let's go for this one. Okay. Got the Pacific Northwest. Oh. Got California. So you can see that a little bit of the game math, by the way. When I if I attack here, I'm kind of surrounding it. So I think I'm, I have some pretty good odds. Actually, I think his forces all adjacent would help in the defense. So he actually would have the edge. I think that's how it works. In other words, I would have one. Let's do like this one, two, three if I attacked here versus his one, two, three, four. Yeah. At first glance, it looked like, haha, I haven't been enveloped. But I think that's not how it works, actually. Anyway, let's keep uh, plugging along. Oh, yeah, because I'm playing that super easy difficulty level, it lets me get four extras. So I really <laughs> just kind of fills in the map with this. All blue, yeah, that's pretty nice. I mean, I can't see myself losing, but uh, who knows? I could be surprised. So this is where I'm placing the stockpile. Again, the enemy can raid your stockpile, and you're pretty much hosed at that point. Not necessarily, but it's a it's a it's a heavy blow dealt. So I'm gonna put it like over here in the corner. Hopefully, he won't be able to catch me there. And you can move your stockpile later. I forget what it, like what the, what it costs. His is in California. <clears throat> Let's do the utilities. I, I remember I used to like you can like you can like define how you want the water to look. And I used to always hate these white dots. You can also have a waves effect, but I used to like plain and then you change the color to a nice blue. So you can also select waves. But yeah, plain was my, my jam. And I used to pick I think this nice color here. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. That's the that's the ocean. Or we could turn it into an ocean of pee pee. But I think I'm going to go with the beautiful ocean. Probably a little light, but <laughs> I like it anyway. You can change player colors, too. I'll leave it alone. That's fine. All right, so, yeah. Oh, oh. Okay, I accidentally ended my turn. I think. Oh, well, I think I wasted a turn. Oh, oh maybe not. This is attack number one. I don't know. Now that I'm thinking of it, I think the way it works is you... Well, first of all, I did accidentally end that phase. Because the problem is I have this joystick where every single button maps to the trigger. And I wind up accidentally hitting, like, the stuff behind where you're holding it. <laughs> but I think what it, how the turns work is you, they, you, you know, the first player does phase one. Then the second player does phase one. 
Then the first player does phase two, the second player does phase two, etc. So in other words, I had a choice of moving my stockpile or just ending that phase, and I just accidentally ended the phase. But I didn't want to move my stockpile anyway. However, I did not forfeit an entire turn, so to speak. So what I can do is actually do an attack. Let's see what info does. I don't remember. Scouting report, force count, territory info. Oh, again, I'm accidentally hitting things. I gotta hold this better so I'm not accidentally hitting it. Force count. What this does is it tells you what would the uh, relative forces be. And I remember a moment ago I was saying if I attacked this place right here, it would be four to three in his favor. Well, that checks out. If you look at the bottom, it says four red and three blue. So what would be an attack in my favor? Perhaps this one, because my horse is helping. So I have three adjacent. If you look at um, one, two, three, and the horse counts as a bonus versus his one, two, three. That's how it works. So I can just kind of scout around like this and find a good place to attack. Stockpiles, it tells you what's in each stockpile. He, uh, I have three gold and he has two. Territory info, I don't remember what that does exactly. Let's try it. Oh, that gives you some, to me, obvious stuff. It tells you what's border, bordering it. What else does it tell you? Produces gold. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. I didn't mean to hit it something again. Okay. All right. So let's exit the screen and plan an attack. Mm. Let's get this place knocked out. I could lose. So if I bring forces, all I can do as far as bring forces, I, you know, in this beginner level, all you have is the horse for things that can help you in a combat. So this guy is already helping because it's adjacent to here. But what I could do is, if I recall how this works correctly, is I can bring a force in here like that. In this case, it doesn't actually add to my attack score of four here. However, it, what would happen is if I win, then my horse is already advanced. It'll be over here and ready to fight in the next battle. It'd be basically a good, a good way to bring them up front, but at the risk of losing your horse. Um, I think I'm not going to do that because I'm playing with high chance. There's still a decent probability I'll lose a 4-3 to three attack. So I'm just going to be a little more conservative and not risk, risk killing my horse. So let's just do it and see what happens. Here we go. It's thinking or something or rolling dice. Attack succeeds. So now that territory is blue. You get to hear a little tune every time you win or lose. I think you can skip it. Because after a while, it's going to get annoying, probably. <coughs> Sorry about that. So, yeah, I have another attack. I don't remember if that's contingent on the first one succeeding. It might be. Like, if you su succeed your first attack, you get a bonus one. And that can be a reason why it's nice to advance your horse. You can kind of give him a nice one-two punch. But you may notice that um, my first sort of demo of, oh, that's four to three, is now four to three in the other direction because I have in my possession this guy here now helping me rather than it helping him. I can also check out here. That's a, that's a coin flip. If I get that, that feels pretty nice. And if anybody has any opinions in the chat, let me know. Um, it seems like if I want to go for the best odds, is this guy here on the east. If I want to go for anything else, it seems to be like it's going to be a coin flip or worse. This is going to be worse. Looks 6-2 in favor of red. Uh, but that said, the best coin flip I could probably muster would be this one here, because I would get that nice central goal there. I don't know if being central is actually good. This one's a 3-3, three, three, but it doesn't really get me anything. So, it's a, yeah, do I want to take the more certain one or risk it and go for the gold? Maybe I'll go for the gold. That sounds fun, doesn't it? Eh, I'm, I'm thinking better of it because, actually, look what would happen next turn. He's going to get it back because if I get this and I, these are still red, right, what's going to happen is he'll attack it next turn with... Uh, well, let's do the math. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. This would be... My, my defense would be... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. That's actually not bad. But his would be one, two, 
three. Oh, this one's actually not adjacent. I was thinking it was with the horse, but the horse is breeding spread to a, a, a horse was gonna is gonna move here. What happens each turn during production, the horse is spread. Oh yeah, but he we already did production for this turn, so this turn he wouldn't be able to take advantage of that. I think I should just go for that one. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go for that gold in the center. It'd be pretty big if I get it, I think. But it's a coin flip, 50-50. Here we go. Oh, I could bring the, the horse in. Should I do that? That might be good to risk the horse in this case. The horses can move two spaces. So it would be five to four if I bring in the horse. There's still the risk of my horse getting killed, though. Yeah, let's do it. Bring in the horse from here. Can I just put him adjacent, actually, and not into the battle itself? I might be able to do that. Let's see if that works. Oh, I, no, I have to put him right into the battle, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Me accidentally hitting buttons again. No, oh, no! Oh, damn it! I wasn't even holding the freaking button! I'm going like this very carefully, and it made me skip my attack. Can I rewind the, the damn emulator? Never rewind feature here? Freaking crap. I don't think I do. All right. Well, what did he just take while I was being mad? I, I, I hate these freaking control. Why, why's the point of having like 18 buttons? Like they, you can't even like hold the thing. I gotta, I gotta be like this. I practically was like this. I was, thought I was holding it like very carefully. Anyway, I, I forfeited an attack, and then he, then he claimed two territories of mine. Well, now I'll just have to get him back, right? I wish I could tell this freaking controller, like, let me just use one button or something. Oh, he goes first this turn. That sucks. He's going to get to attack me first. The, the, the development, he's actually creating a weapon. Oh, there are weapons in this beginner mode. So he bent the two gold to make a weapon where his horse is. That adds three to the combat value. So that's really good to have. I can make a weapon too, though. Um, maybe I'll put it on the front here. He might want to go for this gold. And development. Outbreak of sanity prevents production. Wow, <laughs> I forgot there's random events in this game. So that was the explanation. Outbreak of sanity. We did not get to produce anything. No, no horses, no gold. Outbreak of sanity. <laughs> da, 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 da. All right, no shipping going on because all we can do is move stockpile. He's going to attack. Probably going to get that Mexican area. Maybe. Think, 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 think. What's he doing? Okay, he's getting that. Defense three, but he's going to bring, bring his horse with the weapon. The yeah, horse can pick up the weapon. Watch this. Pick up the horse from here. Pick up the weapon. And bring it in. That's going to be adding uh, four, I think. Yeah. The weapon adds three. The horse adds one. That sucks. Man, you know, I'm, it's really going to... It's going to hurt. It's going to have a long, long-term long impact, that freaking forfeiting a, an attack accidentally. Alright, uh, I wonder if I can defend that gold decently. He's gonna hit it right now, actually, probably. Gold in the east, look at that, yeah. Six to three, oof. I'm gonna have to move the stockpile. He's, like, really getting close to it, claiming it. I'll probably go after his. <laughs> That said, in this version, with just the gold, you just kind of spend the gold right away. You don't really have a huge stockpile, usually. All right. Hopefully, I don't totally blow it this time. Uh, so frustrating. But I ha I'm in the situation. I mean, I can't do anything about it. Uh, info. Let's see. Oh, you know what's going on? This thing's like in turbo mode or some crap. That might be one of the problems. I just, like, tapped it, and it... 
Hmm, how do I? Yeah, I gotta get that of turbo mode. That must be what's happening. At least, at least that's one issue. Uh. You know what it might be? It might be my choice of button. I press the other button. The other button does nothing. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. Only buttons they don't want to do things do things. Don't get it. All right. Anyway, if I attacked here, it's, uh, he's up six to five. I could bring in my horse, and it would be uh, six six. Ryan said, was that an anti-capitalism socialist message? <laughs> Maybe. We're not producing anything because we're sane. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't think I have any good place to attack, really. Gee, I really bungled that. What about here? This is it's going to be horrible. Look at this. Yeah. That golden center might be my best bet. What is this one? Three. Three, two, red. Uh... This one is nine. Yeah, the weapon is huge. I guess I got got to make use of my weapon then, right? By the same principle. I I got it. You know, it might not look obvious to you, but it's making me go through multiple steps of pressing this button when I just tap this once, and sometimes it doesn't register at all. So it's really frustrating me. I got to solve this problem. I think or I'm going to be screwed this whole evening. Um. Nump. Is there anything like auto fire on? Or maybe I should just use the keyboard. That might be safer. I think I'm gonna do that. Use the keyboard. Let me just let me just define what the keys are. Okay, I don't really need. You know, it's not an action game. I don't really need a, a slick gamepad kind of a thing. All right, so fire, space, and that's all I really need. I don't know why it has all these different fire options. Commodore only has one fire button. All right, so now I'm less concerned because I'm using the keyboard. Let's try it out. Sweet. Oh, yeah, that feels much better. You don't have to worry about accidentally screwing it up. All right. Um, yeah, so I think the best bet is to get that gold again, or try to. What's this one? 4-1. Yeah, this is 6-5 in their favor. I'll bring in the horse and cross my fingers, I guess. There we go. Actually, <laughs> wondering if I should bring in if I should bring in the weapon. The reasoning being, this place is going to be surrounded by one, two, three, four, five. If I, if I bring in the weapon, I can have the horse pick up the weapon on its way. It'll be here in this kind of central area, and it'll help me defend. Actually, I think the adjacent weapon helps too. It said right for defense. So I will. I'll just go with this. Let's see what happens. Fifty-fifty shot. Yeah, attack succeeds. Okay. If that repulsed, I, I almost feel like throwing the game at that point. <laughs> Maybe not literally. Uh, let's see what else we can do. Info. What about this guy? 8-4 in their favor. Yeah, it's that weapon and the horse are a lot. And again, by the same principle, I can start taking advantage of my weapon and horse. Uh, what about here? 3-3. Three, three. I guess maybe I'll take out this one. That's like an easy win. This one is 8-4 in their favor. Hmm. If I can take out their pasture somehow over here, then they can't produce horses. And I could like really let my horses spread over the world. You'll see when it happens, horse production happens. For each pasture, it'll put it in the place it's in. But if there's already a horse there, it'll spread to another one. And if I have two pastures, they'll both do that. So it can really... Horses can spread like like wildfire. Wildfire horses. Let's take this place, though. It's my, my only good bet, I think. Attack succeeds. Hey, you can't skip the music. Oof. Actually, there is a setting to turn off the music. Though. I could always do that. You just can't like press a button to skip it. Once it's in progress. All right. One nice thing is I get to go first next turn. Because the way it works is the turn order keeps alternating. And in two-player, what that means is, you know, if it's red goes, then blue goes. And then the next turn, it's blue goes, then red goes. So I get to do the next two attacks, essentially. Or 
If I think I think you only get two if the first one succeeds, but you get the idea. And Ryan says, never turn off this music. Okay, he likes the music. <laughs> uh, because there was no production last turn. We basically don't have any extra gold. And that's the turn then. That's the development phase. So he has literally zero gold, I have one. Okay, gold produces, gold produces. A new horse born here, and gold produces. Okay. He gets his one gold. Horse is born here, and two gold. So yeah, I'm winning the gold game at the moment. And now we can move the stockpile, or not. Uh, I might as well do it because that's the. I think it's. I think it's free. I think when you play the more advanced games, you have other options, and I'm not sure if you can like do all of them. It might be if you choose move stockpile, that's your only uh, action for the shipment phase. But since we're not playing the advanced level. I feel like I might as well just move the stockpile. I can put them like right here, maybe. I think that's probably safer. So let's do that. Move the stockpile here. Sure. Okay, cool. Is he going to move his stockpile? Probably not. Nope. Now it's time to do the attacks. Where do I want to attack? I need to get my, my weapon on the front line. Maybe like here. I feel like that would be nice. I can maybe what I can actually do that can make the horse from the from behind go one step and then uh no I can't do that because you can't put it in the same space as another horse it doesn't work it doesn't let you do that no, only only one horse can be in a space anyway let's see what else I can do though info I can attack here it's eight four in their favor this one three two in their favor what is in my favor? <laughs> I can at least advance the uh, the weapon though. If I said it, say I attacked here. Well, that's probably a bad example. That's not good odds, no matter what. But I could attack, let's say here, and I can move the weapon forward, and then I'd have an extra three, so it would be six four. And then maybe I could attack that horse pasture place. That might be nice. That might be the way to do it. All right, I'm not going to overthink because I am playing easy and I want to cram in a couple more games too. So let's uh, let's try that. Bring forces. And I'm just going to verify that I can't have the horse go um, one pick up weapon and then like two or something like that. I feel like they can only uh, move onto the space where the battle is happening if you bring in the forces. But uh, let's try it. I could be wrong. So horse from here can't reach destination. Okay, so it has to be yeah they have to go into the place you're attacking if you use bring forces. Okay, so uh, bring forces. Oh, does that mean I can't bring the weapon in then? Shoot. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. All right. So I can't bring the weapon in for this battle. I would have to do that during the shipment phase, which <laughs> in the in the difficulty level I chose, I'm not actually allowed to do that. It's too advanced of an option. All right. Uh, well, what's what's actually in my favor? Is anything in my favor? The odds are never in my favor. Um. Well, I could bring this horse into this attack one two if I did that. Maybe that's my best bet. Or I could also attack here and bring him in one two. Or I could attack here and bring him in. No, I can't do that. Well, I could bring this horse in here. That's going to be terrible odds, though. Just to see it. Yeah, I would, I would bring in my horse and it would become three to, uh, six to three red. But yeah, maybe I can do this one and bring in the horse. That would be a tie. I'd risk losing a horse. Well, let's just make stuff happen. This isn't the greatest plan. But it's a coin flip, and it'll be nice if I do win that. If I don't, oh well. <laughs> ah, attack repulsed. So I lost my horse. Oh well. Now we're French because we fought off the enemy or something. Okay, so yeah, you only get one attack if you if you fail. 
That was my first attack, right? I think so. All right, what's he going to do? He definitely has options. I mean, he could, he could just get the Florida area, at the very least. Okay, he's going for that one. Defense 8, but he's going to bring in his horse and weapon. That'll tie it up, I think. Ooh, this, should, this, this is a quite a quite a coin flip with disastrous results for the loser on either side. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Come on, repulsed, 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 repulsed. Yeah! Take that, horse and weapon. Woo! His horse and weapon are done. That's big. That's big. All right. I used to, as a kid, really enthusiastically chant, like, attack or pulse. <laughs> so I'm tapping into that spirit. Oh, you can build a new weapon, though. Don't. Well, I can build a new one, too. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's better that he has one now instead of two. And I'll have two in a moment. I can build a city, even. Ooh. So if I build a city, the way that works is... Uh, first of all, we need three cities to win. Say I put it here, it will double the production of the gold of the space it's on, as well as the adjacent spaces. For some reason, I think it doesn't double horses, though. So it would double the, the gold. I would be getting, I'd be bringing in six gold a turn instead of... um. Uh, three, which is pretty huge, but let me look at the math for how how well a um, a uh, city defends you. We looked at that a moment ago, and just real quick, I know this is kind of small and hard to read, probably. Um, okay, I flipped too fast. It's uh, the defense gets one point. Sorry, two two points for a city in the home territory, two points for each city in adjacent territory. Okay, so basically I'm considering do I want to build a weapon or a city. If I build a city here, I will be giving two extra defense to here, which is pretty huge. But I could build a a, a weapon there and I get three extra defense. But on the you know, on the other hand, having a city will double all of these um lovely golds. So and also it takes me closer to winning. I'm just kind of waffling a little bit. Um, Ryan says, Chopping Wall also came out March 86. Oh, uh, this game was from March 86. And Metallica's Master of Puppets. Cool. All good stuff. Actually, I've never seen Chopping Mall. All right, so city or weapon is the question. Uh, let's do the city. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that'll work out nicely. I don't know. I wish I could do both. I think I really don't want to lose this space. I know I'm just gonna stop waffling. Just do it. Here we go. City. Boom. Look at that. Double the gold everywhere. And again, yeah, my memory was correct. It does not double the horse production, unfortunately. All right. So yeah, I like the, the look of that. The stripes of the city. Where am I in, like, Montana or something there? So it's kind of like a wide area. As you can see, it's not, like, neatly, you know, it's not neatly one territory per state. It's all uh, kind of a blob. You can see some territories like Texas kind of mapped to a state in Florida-ish. I got six gold that round, by the way. Discover, discovery of gold prevents shipment. Okay, so that means we don't get the shipment phase. I don't know what it means, discovery of gold. Uh, in other words, we just can't move our stockpile this turn. Since that's all we're, all we're allowed to do in the beginner level. All right, so he's about to attack me. Let's see if he can pull off. I think he's going to try to get this if it's feasible to do so. Otherwise, he's probably going to pick on some weak territories like these guys. Let's see what he does. He's going for... Okay, that's, okay, that's kind of what I was thinking, a weak one. He's going to bring in his weapon. Nope, okay. He's going for the coin flip. Well, he succeeded. The, the the music should like just play immediately. That's the one thing that's a little weird. Like why wait like three or four seconds? <laughs> okay, doing a second attack. What's he getting? The kind of New York? No, he's getting the Mexican area. Yeah, you can have that, I guess. I mean, what am I gonna do? But yeah, I think I'm in a position where I'm greatly outproducing him now. Uh, I just gotta really defend 
in my view, like this, this, this. Then I can just kind of hunker down and get the three cities and win. But yeah, where am I going to attack? I can do that. Um, let's do the uh, fourth count, actually. It says no when you choose yourself. Fourth count here. That's eight, three in their favor. That's a no-go. What about this one? Oh. Okay, I did the wrong thing. I thought I thought for a second I chose to attack it. So I was like, wait, what? Fourth count is what I meant. Four two in their favor. I could bring in a horse though. Don't think I want to. How about this guy? Five two their favor. This one's one three one their favor. Nothing is really in my favor. Um Well, I mean it can't hurt to even take you know, to take a long shot. If you don't bring in forces, there's no risk. Like I, I could even go for like this one, even though it's that's very unlikely. I think I'm going to do something like that. Just do my best, my best chance, and not bring in anything. That's what was it? That's four two. This is six two. Uh, five two. Eight three. Seven. And I guess I'll just do the. Was it four two over here? Yeah, that's pretty sad. That's my best option without bringing in forces. All right. Yeah, I don't want to send a horse to its suicidal death, though. So let's just go for this guy. Wow! <laughs> hey! High chance for you. That's high chance for you. Four to two odds against me, and I won. Okay, we get another attack then. This one might be promising. Five to three in their favor. It kind of looks like I'm really surrounding them, but I'm not. I could go for their stockpile. Six one. Eh. <clears throat> um. Yeah, this one has two horses next to it. That's why it's not that great. See, basically this. Uh, where's my mouse cursor? This with horse adds one. This horse adds one. The territory adds one. Territory, territory. I am gonna go for it. Why not? Maybe I'll get a lucky break again. Five to three is worse than four to two, right? What else came out in 86, Ryan? Or are you specifically talking about March 86? <laughs> Plan attack. Let's do it. I succeed again! <laughs> I got the lucky draw, the lucky touch or something. Okay. That's my turn. Year five. Yeah, I'm just hoping I can hold the line here. And uh, really, I just need two more cities to win. It's not that big a deal. I can make one. I can make a city now and, and a weapon, actually. Or I could save the extra two, just make one city. And that way I'll um, be closer to getting my city. Well, next turn I'll get my city no matter what, really, unless he really pounds the crap out of me somehow. What I mean by that is, I just need to produce four gold for next turn, and then I can make my final city to win, assuming I make one now. So what I could do is make a city and a weapon. And I think I will do just that. I can put a weapon right here. And the city, well, I won't get any production bonuses anywhere, so it's really about where do I like defend the most with the city. But let's start with the weapon, then. That makes me happy. Do -do -do -do. And the city can go, um, I don't know, should I just put it right? If I put it right here, that's kind of defending the front line pretty good. Can I look at the math of what my, the math? Uh, you know, I'm not even going to think about the math. Let's just do it. All right. The thing is, yeah, my, my concern is he can possibly claim it. So it would, if I were playing super seriously, it would be a good idea to go through all the numbers. And then if it turned out to be kind of bad, I could, you know, or kind of risky, I could just put the city here or something. But I'm going with it. Getting a little reckless. So he can build a weapon. And he's doing just that. Okay, he's, he's trying to, like, attack me via the northeast and, and like, 
maybe trying to come back west. Uh, I would be more concerned if he actually put that weapon kind of by the city I just placed, but that's how he's doing it. <laughs> production, woo, yes. Um, oh, that's right, yeah, since the production comes before the attacks, I, ha I have six gold no matter what. Remember before I was saying if he takes a city, I'll only be able to make four gold, but it doesn't matter, I got six. So I, I, I don't see how I could lose this game unless he somehow is able to take this city this turn. It's not outside the realm of possibility, honestly. But no shipments because of seasonal celebrations. Oops, I accidentally went to the utilities menu. Okay, I attack first though, so I can help my odds here. But you know, if I if I can like claim this place, for example, well, that's, that's not too realistic. But that would be, well, actually more like this one. Yeah, that would be like a lesser problem than a lesser risk of um, this place getting killed or taken over. Uh, seven six is nice, but not great. We've seen crazier results happen. However, my horses are not in range to jump in. They're not two spaces away. So let's replan. Let's check out this one. 11 to 8 in their favor. <laughs> 10 to 1 in their favor. All right, I might just go for that horsey place. This place is not bad. 8, 7. Hmm. I'm going to go for this. I want the horse on my side. 7, 6. Let's roll the dice. Come on. This is me rolling dice. Six is. Yay. Cool. With that territory plus the horse on my side, I feel even safer about this place not falling to the enemy. And we can try another attack. Oh, yeah, you can move your stockpile during the, the conquest phase, too, apparently, huh? Okay, what's a good attack? Can we get this one? 6-4, their favor. And we already kind of reviewed these ones. Eight, so, uh, this Texas might be more in our favor now. Look at that. Yeah, That's actually quite a, an appealing prospect. Let's do it. Success. All right, I think we got this game in the bag. But let's see what they do during their conquest phase. This is their last chance to uh, take out a city of mine. That's their only way of winning. Because they're going to have enough resources to make my third city. And Oh, actually, you, you, to be fair, uh, you have to win the game. At the, you have to have your winning condition, i.e. the three cities, and complete that turn. So he would get another um, potentially pair of attacks on me before I could win. Let's see what he does for this turn. If he can't win anything useful this turn, I, I still don't see it happening. All right, so he's going for that four to four. That's a coin flip. Let's see what happens. Repulse! Ha-ha! <laughs> nice. And he does not get a second attack. Yeah. I don't see him winning. I don't see him stopping me from winning, I mean. Okay, let's get some development to happen. Red goes first. He has two gold. He can build a weapon. But I can build a weapon, too. He's ending development. He's saving his money. Okay, he doesn't want to build the weapon. Maybe he's just giving up. I can again build a city and a weapon. I will protect my neighbors uh, with another city. Um, I don't know. Here. And I'll put a weapon on the same place because I really don't want any of these cities getting claimed. And now they can all protect each other nicely. All the adjacent weapons will help out each other. So yeah, I got a, quite a solid cluster right there. Do, 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 do. I kind of want to get the Borderlands board game now. It would be fun to play this with friends around a table, I think. <laughs> and then after all these years, I could see how combat actually resolves, because it's always been a mystery to me. It's just, all I know is there's, there's low, medium, or high chance. 
I don't know what like what random number generator is being used for the high chance, really. Six gold, five horses. He's not to, not going to move his stockpile. Oh, he's moving it. He's afraid I'm going to grab it. Not that it really matters. He's putting it in a stronger location. I will not move mine. This little prompt here, button for utilities. I used to um, hate waiting, so what I'd actually do is I'd press the button and then go to exit. It would be faster than waiting for the, the prompt to go away. <laughs> kind of funny. Thinking, 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 thinking. Thinking, thinking. I don't have a prayer. <laughs> you don't, you don't, you lose. <laughs> Nice game. All right, he surrendered. He conceded. A lord of conquest is proclaimed. All the land is mine. Ha 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 ha. I have conquested or conquered, conquered North America. Now you get to listen to, if I recall correctly, that little block prelude called, um, what's it called? I don't remember what it's called. Here you go. Listen, you've, you've definitely heard this tune before. If it actually starts playing it. <laughs> I think I, I learned a lot about classical music, or at least was exposed to it first by playing these old games where they would pretty often borrow, you know, music from Mozart and Bach, etc. Because, you know, if you're just a random programmer, it's hard to compose something new, but you could take a, you know, a public domain tune like this one and just code it up and use it. Thanks, Ryan. Ryan says, glad New Mexico is represented. And he also says, good job. All right. So now I'm going to play again. And I'm tempted to do, um, I'm tempted to jump right to expert. So let's take a look again while this lovely tune is playing about the differences. Uh, so we played beginner, which is this one here, where all we had was gold, essentially. And um, if we play level two, we'll add in the iron, iron, coal, and timber, but we won't have the boats yet. Yeah, I'll just put it all in. I feel like I can figure it out. And if, um, I, I doubt it'll be too much on, on you, the viewers, <laughs> if I jump ahead like that. But I should make the, the difficulty of the uh, computer a little higher, too. I'm going to still keep it pretty low, though. Yeah, I'll play again. I hope it doesn't, like, um, use the same settings and everything, though. I'm going to hit no. I think that's what I want to do, actually. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I didn't want to do that. I thought I was going to, like, play again and use all the same map and everything so that I didn't want to hit yes, but really, I probably wanted to hit yes. <laughs> so sorry about that. I'm going to have to load up the game again. Early games and their strange user interfaces, right? It was like whatever the devs felt was good. There was no like consistency, consistency between them. You could have one game that had that same prompt and it would actually take you to the main menu. This game is like, nope. Go to the basic prompt. Okay. I don't know. By the way, you, um, something interesting is this system, Commodore 64, has 64 k kilobytes of RAM, but when basic is loaded up, look how much is free. You only have like about half of it. You know, if you have more than half, but not, not a lot more. So just the fact that basic is loaded up is using like, uh, you know, what is it, roughly 26 kilobytes. Anyway, let's, uh, I forgot about warp speed mode. Let's do that. Warp speed. Yeah, so now I'll play on expert. And um, I'm still not too confident in my abilities, though. So I'll, I'll just bump up the difficulty level to two as far as the computer's uh, abilities. I think that means I still get a couple of uh, bonus territories or something like that. So we'll go right up to expert. 
<laughs> resource abundance. I can now do. Oh, I thought there was a high if you if you like change it to the right levels, but I guess not. It's only low and medium. What's the point of calling it medium then? You could just call it high. So let's do medium. Cities to win. I'm gonna make it a little, little more. Let's go four. I like high chance. Music on. Difficulty scale. I f I feel like if it goes all the way up to nine, I I should be a little less of a wuss, and at least choose like three or something. Let's check the differences again. Uh, I apparently changed the view accidentally. Something's getting cut off, I think. There, that's better. Where was that chart? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should just go. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so uh, if I choose three, for example, that would mean um, computer f picks first, I attack first, and I get two extra territories. Yeah, that sounds pretty favorable for me still. Let's go to three. And away we go, but we can choose a different map this time, so maybe I'll do that. We did North America last time. We could do... Let me know what you guys think, Ryan, or anybody else in the chat. Feel free to speak up. We've got Middle East, China, Prussia, Mediterranean, Shenandoah, North America 2, European Wars, Africa, three continents, South America, Down Under, Polar Ice, World, Early Italia. What is Polar Ice? I don't know exactly. I imagine it's supposed to be like the North Polar or the South or Antarctica or something. Caribbean, Sea of Japan, Shenandoah 2, Ariaga 2, Riverland, and Borderlands. Borderlands, again, I think is the map from the original board game. Uh, Ryan's curious about Polar Ice. Maybe I'll just pick that one. If nobody else has any opinions, I will decide in 5, 4, 3, 2, one, and Ryan says, yeah, so I guess he's down with Polar Ice. Let's do it. I don't remember at all what this looks like, so let's find out. Shenandoah, I think that was like a specific um battle in the Civil War. Isn't that like in Georgia or something like that? Anyway, this one, oh, it's going to be interesting. I have to consider boats. Well, I said I was going to do the expert level, so let's just do it. Use the map, yes. Uh, so I can decide if I'm okay with this. Sometimes the random risk distribution can be so bonkers that you're like, yeah, I don't know about this. But let's take a look at it. You can see all the horses are concentrated on the island. And how I think this is generally going to work is, well, maybe not. My first inkling was maybe one person would be claiming the whole island and the other person would be claiming all this other area along the perimeter. I don't know if it's going to work out like that, actually. It could be we're in a big battle for the island. But that said, it would be nice if the, the resources are fairly distributed evenly. So we can see a couple of gold over here and a gold here. We can see timber, two here, one here on an island, one over here. Oh, this, 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 part's not, this part is actually separate. I thought initially that it was connected to all this. Okay, uh, I feel like the island had... Well... I was going to say, I feel like the island has too much stuff, but at the same time, it is just more territory, I guess. It has a lot of kind of smaller territories concentrated. So that's interesting. It's, um, I'm inclined to just roll with it. Let's just do it. Let's go with it. I don't know if there's something horribly unbalanced about this because I, I, I'm too rusty to get, you know, to have that level of insight. But... It seems like there's a decent balance, except for the horses, maybe. And you can see right away, he's going for the horse on the island. I might have to challenge him and do the same. Um, all right, I got a horse too, buddy. He's getting the iron up there. Yeah, yeah, iron helps us play. I will get the gold right here. This is going to be an interesting land grab. This could be, like, really important to the outcome of the game. I'll get the coal right here. And I'll try to get the horse next if he does it. All right, he's getting the timber there. I am lacking in timber, but I have a good amount of horses. i got to connect these territories, though. Or it's not going to be uh, a fun time. You got that? I, I gotta get some iron and timber. Kind of want to connect these, but I, I'm gonna grab some stuff. 
I can get the island timber. Um, I'll get this one down here. He's filling in that area on the right, which I kind of thought he would. Let's get some iron here. He's getting the gold up there. Okay. Maybe I should challenge him on that. Let's do that. Let's do that. I'll challenge him on the gold. I want to be dominant in gold. All right. He's getting the areas up. He's like, you're going to be like that? I'm going to get the stuff you need to protect yourself. So I better fill this in before he does, and I'm in real trouble. All right. He got that timber. Um, let's try beefing up my timber here. If I have no timber at all, it's going to be trouble. He's going that, to that coal over there. Maybe I'll take this one so I can take his coal. I'll have two to one odds. He's taking the island coal. Um, let's try to get this one to protect here a little bit. He's going all the way up there for some reason. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I will get this to try to surround his gold. He's beefing up up there some more. Again, I want to be more powerful than his gold. He's doing that. I'm going to, I'm going to maybe get this one. Uh, is that worth it? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. That could actually help in the big island battle. This is going to be an interesting one. It's going to be, going to be pretty challenging, I think. Okay, so I have that kind of bottom area pretty well secured, I think, that little um, strip. I don't know what this has to do with polar whatever. Okay, oh, yeah, I got two extra because of the easy difficulty that I'm playing. All right, widespread insanity prevents production again. Okay, so we're going to have no first-term production. That means no horses right away before our first... Uh, conquest phase so that could be interesting i was hoping i would get horses to help because i have more pastures than he does so it kind of hurts me in a sense anyway uh we got to place our stockpile how come it didn't prompt us to place oh it does that later i guess it doesn't ask your production to prompt your i mean to place your stockpile make shipment there's nothing to ship there's no weapons no horses no boats no stockpile yet so let's end shipment Maybe it means Mountain Dew Polar Ice is right. It could be. This could be like from Mountain Dew Polar Ice. Exactly. Plan and attack. Yeah, I would love to get a good leg up on this island. Four to two. Uh, I could also try to get the iron. That's three to two. That's bad odds for me. That's bad odds for me. It could be cool to get this coal or this gold as well. That's good resources to have in my pocket. Um... So, you know, I get two attacks, so maybe do the three to one first, followed by the iron three to two, just to, you know, play into the odds a little better. It's better to do the attack that has better odds first, because if, if you fail your first attack, you don't get a second one. Uh, let's do that. Let's get the gold. Then he'll have no gold, and that's kind of a desperate situation for him, I think. Just to, to, to start him in that immediately is probably going to be pretty good. But there's no guarantee I'll win the three to one. Let's see what happens. Success. All right. Now I just got to, like, protect protect that corner pretty well. And, of course, he can try to get this. But I'm going to try to start um, weakening him at the island. Maybe by taking the iron, like I was suggesting. So let's do that. Iron helps us play. 3 to 2 is obviously not amazing, but it's still good. Let's see what this one is, though. I could get that just for the strength bonus. You know, to have that territory protecting all the others it's adjacent to. It's actually adjacent to so many. I won't get any resource bonus out of it, but it might be worth it anyway. But basically, do I want to try to stave off his iron resources per, uh, like immediately? I feel like long term, this is probably a better bet. It's more useful, and it's better odds of me succeeding right now. So I think I'm going to do that, even though I won't have the iron right away. Ah, well, it didn't even work, so... All right, that's how it goes with high luck. Now, unfortunately, he's going to probably claim my horsey place here. I don't like that at all. And there's not anything I can do about it. He'll have four to two odds against my pasture. And, you know, that kind of sucks that we didn't have the first turn production because that would be pretty big. But anyway, he's going to get that right. I, I promise you right now this is his first attack. I'm putting the bets down. Yep, he's doing it. Well, maybe I'll get lucky. My four to two failed, right? Maybe his four to two will fail. Nope, no such luck. Oh, he's going to eat my coal next, I think. All right, so I don't like that eventuality at all. Hmm. Uh, 
feel like the, I'm already thinking, oh, the island is lost. But hopefully I can hold off to some degree still. That's my only call, isn't it? Shoot. Well, I can, I can get this call pretty easily. All right. So he took my pasture and my call. And at the moment, I have no call, but I, I can claim one. And he's definitely got the edge in brute strength on the island. And once he gets the horses flowing, he'll really be more powerful than me. But I have to make a stand there, I feel like. We have no resources, either of us, so we can't build weapons or anything. Oh man, these horse that's so painful that I didn't get the first turn production. Shoot. Well, at least he has no gold. <laughs> Let's review the resource cost for thing after the production happens, I guess. He got two, three, three, zero, two. He's putting a stockpile in the upper left corner, that makes sense. I feel like I'm pretty much sucking except for I have the mar market cornered on gold. And you can see I have no coal at the bottom. Uh, I guess my stock file should be here. I feel like that, uh, it looks really good, but I feel like it's worse than it actually is because a, a simple boat attack could, could actually do like a one-two punch and claim my stock pile in one turn. <laughs> so hopefully that won't happen. But I, I don't really see much of a better place. Maybe this one because it, this one might not look good because it looks like red is so close. But I actually have more territories surrounding it, so that might be better. Eh, I'm not sure, though. Because this one would be like a one-to-one -one attack for his red to go here. The next, next thing you know, he's right on top of my stockpile. I guess I'll go with the timber. He goes first. He's going to get the first conquest again because the way the turn orders work. So that's I mean, I shouldn't say again, but he's going to get to go and attack before I am, essentially. So that's kind of scary. A shipment, I could move a horse. I think I'm going to move my horse. I think I think he can do that with the shipment phase. I have to check. But what I could do is move him right um, here. That way he's defending all the adjacent territories. Right now he can only defend himself and this one. So let's move that horsey. Now he's protect, protecting more stuff. Stop here. And shipment. This is gonna be it's gonna be pretty brutal, I'm afraid, but let's see what happens. I need a really good attack for repulsed. Or he just picks on the crap like this thing here that I don't really have any use for. But I don't know, I feel like I need to make somehow make progress in attacking this island. And if those horses really spread like the plague. I'm going to be in huge trouble. That's four to four. It's a tie. You're bringing a horse. He's not doing it. Coin flip. We need a repulse here. Really need a repulse here. Oh, succeeds. All right. So my foothold on the island is ever weakening. And now comes the next attack. Is he going for the gold? Yeah. Three to two in my favor, but he's going to bring in a horse. Yeah, and that's going to be a coin flip again, which he seems to be good at winning. He's good at winning coin flips. But if I manage to pull off the repulsion, he will lose a horse, which should be great. So come on. Attack repulsed. Repulsed, 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 repulsed. Oh! Well. I'm, <laughs> I'm like almost ready to throw in the towel. Uh, all right. I won't do that yet. First of all, I need to fix the ocean. It looks like a bunch of dots. No, um, I mean, I can easily take the coal at the bottom. I need coal. I, uh, well, easily means two to one. With my luck, it won't, won't actually happen. But let's check out the force counts. This would be four to two in his favor. This one, five to three in his favor. Seven to two in his favor. Sheesh. This one should be one to one. Oh, two to one, sorry. Two to, this one's two to one in my favor. I guess I'll just do that for starters. At least I have a good chance. And coal is something I need anyway. Something my body needs anyway. If I lose this, though, I'm just going to throw my hands up. Okay, it worked. Woohoo! All right, now we need to make a bold move here. 
It's a bold move, Cotton. But we need to get this gold with the horse. If we can pull this off, that'll be a big... Well, I, I don't know. I don't know how to complete the sense. It'll be really um, good for my morale, and it's nice. <laughs> but it's not going to like win me the game or anything. Uh, that was two to... Four to two, but was there was there a better one? I think this one was a little better. I, yeah, I guess five to three is better than four to two, but that's less valuable, I think. So I'm going to go for this one. Uh, I need a good amount of luck right here. Dark seeds. No, no such luck. All I can say is that at least I'm going to have another um, horse produced right here. Or before his next attack happens. And I go first in the attack next turn. All right, year three. Production, please. Let's make the um, the water nice. Let's try a wave this time. I remember not liking waves that much, even when you make it the ocean color, but let's do it. Eh, it's not that bad. All right, I can make a weapon and a boat. Or I guess it's an aura boat. I gotta look, at, look up the prices. Back to the manual. So the prices are... Um, let's find those. Yeah, down here, you can see them in the lower left. So, this is pretty important to take note of, by the way. Nope. Okay, my drawing thing is conflicting with something somehow. There we go. Alright, so one iron and one coal for a weapon. A boat is three timber or three gold, if you notice right below. That's interesting. You can just buy the boat or you can build it with timber. Okay, so I can make a weapon with one iron and one coal, or get a boat with three gold. I don't... I guess I could make a weapon just to try to keep my foothold there in the island. I feel like he probably will too, though. You know, I'm going to go for it, though. I got to gotta hold that island to some, to some degree. Let's uh, just do it. Problem is he... <laughs> If he beats it, he gets to claim the weapon for his own. What, what, what choices do I have? Let's do it. And I can still build a... No, I can't. Cause that, wait, what did that cost? Oh. Oh. So that cost me two gold and... And one iron and one coal. I misread the manual here. I don't know if you can see it too. I know it's, I should probably zoom in, but zooming in makes it smaller for some reason. Okay, I don't understand. But uh, maybe using this zoom in would be better. Okay, scroll it. No. Jeez. Okay, so what I was saying was it costs two gold on the easy difficulty level for a city. But when you play the higher difficulty levels, it adds to the cost one iron and one coal. That's not the entire cost. So it's two gold and one iron and one coal for a, a weapon. That's pretty expensive. But at least I know that because he's lacking in gold so much, he cannot actually build a weapon this turn. That's the one edge I have him in, basically, a, uh, in, in uh, gold. And, I, and Ryan said, by the way, polar ice is a tough place to raise a horse. <laughs> but that's my development phase. Nothing else I can do. Oh, he can make a weapon. I guess he had enough gold from before. No, wait. He has no gold. Is it in either or? You can spend two... I'm so confused. I got two weapons. Ah. Why did mine cost gold? Oh. I think it is an either or, but I had no, I had no coal actually, so it caught, it made me spend gold. Okay, I think I got it now. But now he got a boat. Jeez, so now I have to worry about the boat picking up the weapon and attacking me, which is a thing. Okay, production. At least I got that horse to protect my little foothold there. And his horses are gonna make me very sad in a moment. Yeah, that's actually quite convenient for his, his future boat attacks. He can put the horse and the weapon on the boat and then come and attack. Oof. 
And the way that works is the weapon adds three, the horse adds one, and I think the boat adds two. So basically he can attack anywhere remotely, uh, anywhere remote that's connected to the water with an attack force of six. So he could easily just be like, hello, I'm over here now, and that's a six versus three, or something like that. So yeah, <laughs> this is going to be a rough game. It already is a rough game. Uh, make shipment. Can I do anything useful? I mean, I can't really ship these horses, the weapon, I don't see it really beneficial to moving the weapon down here. And I don't really want to move my stock file, so I guess I'm ending shipment. Let's see what he does, though. Will he move his his weapon, his horse? He can probably move, say, this horse closer to the front lines here, unfortunately. That would be smart for him to do. Just like uh, put it here or even here. But he's going to think about it for five minutes. <laughs> All right, Ryan, thanks for joining. Ryan says, thanks for the stream, Mark. Going to eat my meatless meat. Go enjoy your, your tacos, your pea tacos. <clears throat> I bet it's pretty good, actually. All right, take care, Ryan. Thanks for hanging out. You were actually here for quite a while. You were here for like um 90 minutes. So, yeah, appreciate it. Take care. So, yeah, this shipment is, it said it could think up to one minute. It's done thinking. No, it's not done thinking. I thought I heard the noise when I was talking. I'm just going to hit the space bar and make it go ahead. It is still thinking regardless of that. Okay. Hmm. I thought it said you could uh, press your button to make it happen, to make it skip the thinking. And, and space bar is my button, by the way. There it goes. Oh, it's doing no shipment. Okay, it really considered it, but it decided not to ship anything. All right, I think I need some lucky numbers here. Lucky rolls, so to speak. Let's see what my odds are here. Five to eight in their favor. Seven to eight in their favor. That's, that's probably my best bet. This one is hopeless, pretty much. <laughs> uh, shoot, I don't know. This will be more valuable. This is actually more feasible. Again, I am considering just maybe going for this one if I have decent luck. It's pretty close to 50-50, probably. A little weighted in their favor. If I succeed there, then I could probably go for either this. No, not that one. I don't know. Maybe I should just go for this one. This one's going to get easily claimed again. But the odds are de decent. All right. Let's just do it. Come on, I need some good luck here. Oh. Well, that was not good luck. So, now I have to eat, eat whatever he's throwing at me. This is not going to be pretty. I promise you this is not going to be pretty. <laughs> Here comes the boat going for my stockpile or some crazy shit like that. Or he might just go for... He could even do this. He could attack here and he could bring the boat to help if he wants to. And with the horse and the, and the weapon. The only downside for him there is uh, you can't have two horses or two weapons in the same territory. So if he wins, these... You know, we can cancel out, sort of. If he actually beats this territory without bringing in horse and weapon, he gets to claim the horse and weapon. They don't get killed in the fight. So that would be pretty nasty if that happened. I mean, <laughs> I just really need some luck here. I don't really see what else I can do. So hopefully I can... Hopefully my brave horsies with weapons can... <laughs> with weapons in their mouth can uh, withstand an attack here. Maybe they're gun they're like guns in the horse's mouth and they're sh they're shooting them at at the enemy. Hey, come on, I need you know, go faster. I pressed space and it actually worked that time, I think. You're, oh yeah, oh, oh you're doing what I was saying was a possibility. Oh crap, here comes the boat. Oh no, this boat, put the weapon aboard. Put the horse aboard. Sailboat. Oh no, six to three. Hey, if I win this, door, I will kill a boat, a horse, and a weapon. Come on, repulse, 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 repulse. Oh, oh. 
the only thing repulsing here is my uh my ego is 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 pretty repulsed. Oh, now he goes for the stockpile. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> right, go to my stockpile. Hey, Eric, how's it going? I'm not doing well here. <laughs> I'm doing well in general in life. Just not right now. Okay, I have no resources. He took them all. Ah, I think I spent most of it anyway, but I did have a little bit. Um, oh my goodness. He has enough to buy four cities and win the game, basically, right now. I totally blew this game, I guess. Do you know this game, Eric? This is Lords of Conquest. I I should just surrender and start over, give it another try, but uh, let's see it to the end anyway. Yeah, so, you know, we're playing four cities to win. A city takes one of each resource to win, and he had basically enough to get all four cities he needs to win the entire game, so he's about to do it. I would need one hell of a lucky attack to, to beat him. Um, he attacks first, actually, so if he can wipe out my little foothold on his island, then I don't see what else I could possibly do. And he's got all his four cities he needs to win, but he doesn't win until it's the end of the turn. So he'll do his attack. If I get extremely lucky, he won't take anything further. And then if I get extremely lucky, I can claim one of his cities. That's pretty much my only hope. I have nothing to develop because he took it all and he claimed my stockpile. But production happens now. This is for next turn, essentially. So yeah, Eric, this is by Electronic Arts. Uh, developed by Eon, who I was saying earlier were mostly board game creators. In fact, one of their board games, Cosmic Encounter, is one of my favorites. Uh, but they made uh, a game called Borderlands in 1982. And this game, Lords of Conquest from 86, is the computerized version of Borderlands. And yeah, geez, I'm so screwed. All right, we're not giving up yet, though. I'll give up once I lose those two territories with the horses. I said I was going to see it to the end, so I'll do it. But really, the end is just, you know, he has his four uh, cities. If he still has the four by the end of the turn, he wins. I guess I'll put the stock vial here. Religious upheaval prevents shipment. Okay. I can't do any shipment anyway. He attacks first. There we go. Is he going to go for this one? No. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, you can bring the boat there. I didn't even realize it. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, I get... I, <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have jumped right to advanced. I'm forgetting like exactly how things work. Hey, that's all right, though. It's a learning experience. Six to four. I need some good luck right here. Come on, repulse, 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 repulse. Yeah! Kill the freaking horse and the ship and the weapon. That's a, a what's the term? A Pyrrhic victory? I think that's the wrong term. But uh, basically, I get to take a... a False amount of satisfaction. <laughs> uh, a tiny amount of satisfaction, even though I'm going to lose. All right, but at least he wasn't able to knock out my foothold with that failed attack, and he lost a boat, a weapon, and a horse. But let's see what my odds are of actually attacking the city that has another city next to it. If I can win this, that'll save the game. Eight to five in his favor, though. What about this one? Four to one in his favor. What about if I attack this one first? Nope. 5 to 14 is favor. That has the best odds of anything I can do, but it's not really that strategically great. I'm just going for the city. I got to do it. And I guess I'll bring in my horse from the rear. I would hate to lose the horse, but this is my Hail Mary of the game. This is, this is it. Here we go. 8 to 6, their favor. Succeed, 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 succeed. Oh. Well, 
Game over. <laughs> oh, I hurt. Man, I got so brutalized. I feel like... I don't want to just blame it on one random event, but I feel like when I had the edge in pastures on this island, the first turn not producing any horses was a real kick in the choose your body part of choice. Yeah, I lost. Lord of Conquest is proclaimed. All right, let's try this again. I'm going to give it another try. Maybe a different map. All right, now we hear the Bach tune. Um, I'm going to... Well, let me quit without hearing the whole Bach tune. Oh, okay, yeah, it did let me quit. All right, let's try again. I'm going to use the same setting, different map, I think. I want something a little less complex, although I don't really know what I'm picking. But I'll, I'll, I'll go with game level expert again. And four city, the element of chance high. I'll, I'll stick with difficulty level three as well. Map selection. Thanks for the likes, who, whoever's given me likes so far. And if you are watching and would like to say hi in the chat, I'll say hi back to you. It's very exciting when that happens. Now let's pick a different map. How about China? That sounds like a big... um. A big land mass. That's going to be messy. Let's try it. I know there's some water areas, but I don't know if you, if the other areas separate from mainland China are part of the game. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's just a big, big mass, essentially. Let's try it. Some of the territories are huge. Wow. Let's just do it. Okay, um... The question is, do we want to... Sure, let's just stick with what's, what's there. There's nothing horribly unbalanced. Everything looks pr pretty well distributed. You could pick, you could nitpick some things like... Uh, there's a couple of tinders together here. Or whatever it's called, lumber timber. Let's just go ahead. All right, so he's going first. He picks a pasture. Always a good way to start, I think. Uh... I'll pick this pasture. <clears throat> he picks the iron next to his pasture. I shall pick uh, this guy here, the lumber. He picks iron. I'll pick coal. He picks that gold. I don't need gold. There's only two gold, and one of them is kind of more in his area-ish. Maybe I'll try to get a little foothold in here with some horses. Picks over there some coal. Okay. Pick some coal up there as well. Let's get um iron here. Oh, is that gold up there? I didn't see that big one. Huh. Gotta grab some gold. Try to connect them. Is what I'll do next. Uh I don't know. I don't wanna miss out on some nice resources though. Um shoot. Picking that. Timmy, I gotta reinforce that corner here. Taking that big wide one. Um, I'll take this. I feel like I've got I'm doing pretty strong in the lumber, if nothing else. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna try to connect these horsies along the kind of the coast, maybe. To other stuff that I have. Getting the massive territories. The thing about the massive ones is it's kind of a double-edged sword. Any uh, opposing enemy that's touching it, you know, can attack it. But every uh, the, the inverse, you know, the converse is it, it, true as well. He has a lot of defenders potentially with a large territory. So I don't know. He's got the, like this kind of mass, and I'm kind of getting these surrounding coasts sort of pretty interesting, I guess. Like coastal China versus inland China. <laughs> I want to beef up my gold guy here a little. All right. Oh, yeah, because I'm playing level three, I get two free territories. Appearance of Pseudo Nostradamus. 
<laughs> prevents production. Why are we having all these first turn lack of production? I, I feel like that's really annoying on the first turn. Let's paint our water. This time let's do uh, plain. And the color can be, let's make it a little different. Let's make it like uh, this color. Okay, that's not bad. All right, I, I don't know if I, I don't know, I'm getting a feeling that having a big land mass like that is probably better than having the surrounding coast, but we'll see how it works out. Shipment or stockpile, uh, nothing to ship. Okay, so what's my plan of attack here? Literally plan of attack. I mean, I could try to pick off these guys. They're good resources. And uh, I should have decent on I wish I had the freaking horses. Um, it would be good to do anything to protect this gold. Because if I have no gold, that's going to be a... It's going to be a sorry game. So can I pick off any of these guys who might be involved in taking out my gold in a subsequent turn? Not really. I might just have to beef it up in defense. I could probably take out this guy here at the start. But 3-3 three to three isn't the best odds. So let's, let's turn back to, to looking over here. I think I should take out these resources in the lower left corner first. The coal is the best odds I have. This is pretty good odds too, but I, I think I'd rather get the coal. So maybe I'll take the coal... And then maybe this one or something. Just anything that can build up that strength of the eastern coast, kind of, to protect my gold eventually, if possible. Uh, if, on, the, on the other hand, if I manage to take his timber here, he will have no timber. Mm, yeah, well, he could probably take one back, though, like here. Anyway, let's just let's start with this call because that's my best odds, and it's a good it's the best odds to have a good result. Get some resources, succeed, good. Okay. The music sounds mangled for some reason. Uh yeah, I would really love to protect my gold better. If I lose that gold, it's going to suck a lot. So, this will, yeah, again, like I already kind of spelled out what the difference is here. This is nice, re nicer resource-wise and for choking his lumber-producing potential. This would be better for, like, gradually protecting my gold up here. I'm going to go with the gradually working towards protecting my gold. Although on the other hand, it's 3-3 three to three versus what's this one? This is, like, almost, I wouldn't say guarantee, but 3-1 to one is much better than equal odds. Eric says, off to a good start. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Uh, I guess I'll do this one. I kind of... I'm going to really regret it if I lose that gold, but let's just do this. Okay. All right. Yeah, that, that's, look at this. Now I pretty much totally have, like, just all the, the perimeter of this whole map. And he has all the inland stuff. That's pretty kind of funny. Kind of cool, I guess. All right, now let's see what he does. Going for my lumber there. Three to three. All right, I need some good luck. Come on, repulsion. Be repulsive, you lumber. Yeah! I am sufficiently repulsive. Those <laughs> who have repulsed the attacker. Cool, that's a good start. All right. Now he goes first this turn, so he's actually going to get the first chance to attack. Unfortunately, that's how the, how the game goes. It reverses the turn orders. We can develop nothing because we had no first turn production due to the random event. Oh, again, crop failures prevent production. I try to I try to get this. This is the thing I like to do. I like to get the early edge on horses because that can really build up your strength. But if you have no early production, does it matter? Excuse me. Okay, I'm not making a shipment or moving a stockpile. I have neither of those things. Nothing to ship. Ship means you move around like a boat, horse, or weapon. But we can't actually produce anything. Alright, going for this one again. 
Repulse again, repulse again, repulse again, repulse again, repulse again, repulse again. Oh, no such luck that time. He's got his lumber, timber, whatever it is. What's the official name? It's all stuck. Teeter tottering. Let's check the rules while the music's playing. They're called timber. Okay. Attacking again. You might as well in this game. Oof. Another 50 50. That one's going to hurt if he gets it. All right. Repulsion for the win. All right. So, what are my attacks? I wish I had some horsies, but I'll stop repeating myself on in that. Um, so if I really good luck, or, yeah, if I had really good luck, he wouldn't have gotten this timber, but overall the luck's a little bit on my side, yeah. This one I can take four to three. This one I mentioned before, I wanted to get a three to three. Um, what do we got here? Four to three in their favor. That'd be good to have if I can get it. Maybe I'll go for the best odds first, because that's not, that's pretty good strategically as well to have that one, just to beef up my southern defense there. And again, I do want to get this. If I can pull off this one, I feel like that would be pretty nice. And one thing at a time, let's get the easier one. Again, nothing's guaranteed though. Four to three could easily go south, but let's let's do it. Yeah. can turn off the music so you don't have to hear this every time. I'll just leave it for the time being. Um, so now my... What are my odds in the horse place? Two to four. That, that's not great odds, but if I manage to you know, pull off an upset there, that would be cool. Let's see, four to two. Four to three. Yeah, I guess my best odds. And again, I do want to protect, work on protecting the gold, so maybe I should go for this one. This, this one is so tempting, though. That would be a nice one to have. But maybe next turn when I have some horsey power here, assuming it actually happens. The horse will be produced at that pasture. They don't have uh, most likely 50-50 odds unless he manages to change the situation. But here we go, 50-50 chance. Uh, as we've seen, if they're really 50-50 chances, it can go either way. Let's see what happens. Repulsed. Damn. All right, so he took one from me. I took one from him. Year three. Come on, give me some production. First it's development though, so nothing develops. Now production. All right, we got horsies. Woo! And as you can see, I have a little bit of every resource. I got a lot of a lot of timber actually. One, two, three, one, and two horses. Stockpile time. Yeah, where are we gonna place the stockpile? So with boats in play, we always have to figure that you know being on the coast is never totally safe. In this case, though, at least for the time being, if I place it right here. You know, all the coastal areas are, are controlled by me, but I'm probably better off putting it like here, I guess. Yeah, let's do that. I suppose he's probably going to put his stockpile like right over here. We'll see. Actually, it might be more. Okay, he's doing that, yeah. I was going to say by the numbers, he might be like stronger, like here or even here. Even if it's not quite as back in the corner. Okay, I can make a shipment. Moves to, uh, do I want to move a horse closer to the front is basically the question. Uh, and again, I do definitely want to protect this golds a lot. So maybe I'll move, maybe I'll move a horse up here. That way he can help in this battle to get that territory. If I put it here, it'll teeter the odds in my favor for, for when I attack here. So let's make that shipment. Another thing to consider is now he's stronger on the offense over here. 
So I could consider moving the horse west so that he can't make too much progress getting these guys. But I'm going to go with my I must predict the gold at all costs strategy and do that. I do always remember finding the AI quite challenging in this game. It rarely does anything like really like, what, what are you thinking? Pretty good. Okay, what am I going to do here? So this one is more feasible now, right? Should be 4-4. Four, four. Yep, that's pretty cool. And my friend here is now in my favor. Yeah. All right, let's go for this guy. Oops, I misclicked. This one's in my favor. Let's get it. Success. Woohoo. All right, now I'm going to get either that big long one on the west edge of the map, or maybe this one, three to four, but in their favor. Mm. <laughs> I have a ghost of a chance of getting that one, but nah. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll do that long flat one. That's pretty a pretty good position strategically, and it is equal odds, 50-50, ain't bad. You don't lose anything if you fail an attack, just the opportunity. Unless you bring in the reinforcements. All right, let's do it. 50 50. Success, success, success. Yeah! All right, we're making inroads into China. I wonder what, wonder what this tiny body of water is in, in the real world, China. I don't really know my China geography super well, as well as this one here. Anyway, let's hope I can fend off some nasty attacks. I'm afraid he's going to really make inroads. Did he just choose not to attack? Is that what happened? There's like no reason. To... I'm like dumbfounded because I was just saying the AI is good and doesn't do stupid things. Oh, he made a good city. But I'm actually going to rewind my own stream here. As soon as I see what he's finished developing, he got a city which is quite quite a development. Uh, but let me look at my stream. I'm gonna rewind it real quick. That that's blowing my mind. There's no reason not to attack. You don't lose anything unless you bring in reinforcements. So even if it's like 20 to 1 odds against you, you might have to roll the dice. But let me just um, I'm looking now. I just have to find the right spot in the video. Yeah, he said I don't want to attack. Okay. Huh. Okay. He's trying to make peace with me, that's why. Okay, so I could actually build a city of my own or a weapon. Can't do both. Or a boat. Uh, I don't think the boats are going to be too useful in this game. I mean, it could be if we both wind up sharing the coast coastal areas right now is just you know one or the other but i mean i could build a weapon or city up here again i'm really paranoid about losing my gold um you know the cities double your production for all adjacent territory so that's pretty great this i'm also scared of losing this area though i, I I really don't get why he wouldn't have tried to attack there. Um, so, yeah, I'm thinking city or weapon. Uh, weapons add three, and that can be quite good on the offense and defense. City is what you're trying to do to win, and the extra um, production is quite nice. I don't think I'm leaning towards a weapon at the moment. I only get one. Uh, I'm teeter tottering, waffling. That's what I do. Um, let's make a weapon. 
I mean, if I'm, if I'm so afraid of losing the goal, I could put one here. That would be great. But also, it would be good to strengthen this front here, and maybe I can make some inroads taking out this timber and maybe even the pasture here. That would be fantastic if I can, if I can pull that off. I'm going to do that. I can still make a boat. <laughs> Uh, is there any use I can make for a boat right now, the way it is? <laughs> technically, yes. Technically, technically yes. Because see, what I could do is, this is so stupid, but I could make a boat in this little lake, and it would help for it attacking uh, this gold or this iron. <laughs> uh, besides the silliness of it, is it worth it at all? Um, it might be eventually. Right now, I don't think so. It's good to know I can do that. Okay, he's going to attack first. Let's see what he can do. Oh, production. Yeah, so he's going to get a lot of a lot of iron. The city does help a lot. That's a great place for a city, too, because look how many resource uh, territories it's doubling. So yeah, I can't blame him for making it. I have, like, no really great places for a city. Well, actually, uh, I could put it on my stockpile with the coal. That would double my coal and like each of those timber places but i'm feeling good about my decision to make a weapon still sometimes with the um horses you have to get a little lucky about where they reproduce this one it went over here which i was kind of hoping it would go like either here or maybe here to be more on the front but it's still it's still good to have an extra horse plagues of cockroaches prevent shipment okay no moving no moving our horses around or weapons. All right, let's see what he does for conquest. Dun 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 dun. Where's he going? All right, going for that guy. The fence is in my favor at least, but he's bringing horses, a horse. So it's going to be a 50 50. All right, we got a root for repulsion. Repulse, repulse. Repulse, 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 repulse. Repulse, 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 repulse. Repulse, repulse. Yay! We killed a horse, too, in the process. Woo! Take that. <laughs> this makes up for my horrible luck last time. <laughs> uh, the tables could turn any time, but I'm going to enjoy my good luck for now. Okay. Yeah, so where to start? I mean... It almost seems obvious to start here, but let's take a look at the numbers. Like, he does have a defending city, though, so that might not be as good as it looks. It is in our favor still. Though. Six to five. What about this one? This is probably terrible. Five to seven in their favor. Mm. It looks like that timber place is the way to go, odds-wise, for sure. And I could bring in a horse. It would suck if I lose it, but uh, them's the risks you take, I guess. Yeah, let's bring in a horse. I like the idea of going from 6 to 5 to 7 to 5. Feels more comfortable. Here we go. All right, and now we have a horse in the front lines, too. Okay, the interest of moving this along faster, I'm going to turn off the music next time I have a chance. I actually like it too, but it does does kind of waste time. I wish it kind of it could maybe just let you um, keep playing while the music goes. So now what are my odds here? Oh, yeah, I can, I'll have a horse monopoly if I can pull that off. I can't bring in any forces, unfortunately. I mean, I can bring in... This one, but he's already contributing to it. It would just be to move him here. And it wouldn't make my odds any better, in other words. Um, I think that's the way to go. It's probably the best odds. And that's a good place strategically. Other options, though, that would be an amazing upset if I could pull that one off to claim the city. Not likely to happen. That's no chance there, really. Mm, yeah, let's go do it. We're going to go for the pasture. Seven to six is pretty good. Let's roll them dice. 
Yeah! We're taking over China from the coast. Uh, I wonder. I like to imagine I was like some kind of a, I'm some kind of pirate raiders who who first took over all the coast and now now I'm moving inland. Year five. Let's turn off the music. I would have left it on for Ryan if he was still here, but he's not here. All right, so you can see I am lacking in iron. Iron helps us play. But otherwise, my production is quite nice. Um, I'm not doing green and gold either, actually. But yeah, it kind of makes me think I want to put cities down where I could double my iron and or gold. I guess a nice place for a city might be right here. That would double the coal and iron. And if I managed to claim this iron, it would double that iron as well. And this provides a lot of protection. This, each city provides two defense to everything it's next to, adjacent to, as well as itself. So that might be a good place. Um, of course, I'm always paranoid about losing the gold, so I could also put it up there. Alternatively, put it up there, I mean. Um, what are my chances of actually claiming this, though? I, huh. So my idea is I could put the city up here, and if I manage to claim this iron, I don't really need the city to double my iron. But I have to do development now. I can't wait till after I conquest. Do conquest. Uh, oh, I'm due to have a horse produce here, so that's good. That'll actually add to my odds, add one to my odds right here, and he won't be producing anything. So it'll be a uh, seven six in his favor, and I could pull in this horse perhaps. Then it would be actually a coin flip. Ooh, that's pretty appealing. I mean, a coin flip is still a coin flip, but uh, I could use. Oh, did we already do shipment this turn? I don't, I don't remember if that cockroach prevented shipment last turn. If I can do shipment still, I don't really remember the order of these things always. I could move the weapon up on the front line. Let me check the uh, development comes first, I think, actually. Let me check the manual, though, real quick. Uh, bear with me one minute. Just checking the manual for the phase order here. Development is first. Yeah, so then, then production, then shipment. Okay, so in other words, I can move during the shipment phase. I can move this weapon right up here and that actually gives me some pretty good odds of being able to take out this iron place that i got my eyes set on so i'm gonna choose long story short i'm gonna choose to make a city up here and double my gold production and timber and also it'll add defense to the gold right there and i can build a boat but again uh nah What is he going to build? He can actually build two cities, which is quite formidable. I didn't consider that. But he's going for a weapon. <laughs> That's another thing I didn't consider. He's building a weapon right up there. Okay, so, so much for my plan, but we'll see what the numbers look like. That could be quite a battle. Oh, 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 shit. <laughs> okay. Again, I was getting a little too cocky, and now I'm realizing how... Well, how strong his fronts are all of a sudden. Okay, let's start breeding horses. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Give me another horsey, baby. Here we go. I needed him a lot. New horse. Okay, yeah. Man, I could build boats like crazy if I wanted to. It costs how much timber each? I feel like I might as well buy one for fun next turn. They only cost timber? Or I think it's like an either, yeah, it's either three timber or one gold for a boat. So I can easily crank out a few boats for the heck of it. <laughs> Just put them in this little lake like I was talking about. It could be like a surprise attack. Haha. <laughs> All right, so make shipment. Yeah. Um, I think I do want to put this weapon up here. Let's 
Let's do a fourth count, though. What happens here? Oof, he had the edge there. That sucks. You may think, well, even better reason to put a weapon there, but really it doesn't help defensively because um, the, the adjacency aids in the defense anyway. And what's my... Oh, jeez, my odds aren't great if I try to attack there anymore. But again, I could move in the weapon, and then it will become 13 to 10, and I could ship in a horse, and it become 13 11. Still their favor, though. Whew. Yeah, it's only he uh, built up nicely. I can't um, can't I can't call this game in the bag yet. Nonetheless, I think ultimately what I need to do is uh, move up the weapon. I'm thinking again, though. I th I'm thinking maybe it's better to place it actually here than here. Because this would still do good on offense trying to take care of here, as well as this place would defend more territories. Um, what's my fourth count over here? Yeah, I got a pretty good foothold there. Yeah. That one sucks. And if he takes that, I wouldn't want to lose the weapon, so... Let's make the shipment of the weapon to here. Yeah. All right, that's it. Ooh, this is getting pretty exciting. He's thinking. Da -da -da -dun. He is making a shipment. What's he doing? Horse. From there, move on. Okay. All right. Huh. Let me check another force count, actually. What is... Okay. At least I'm in the... At least I have the edge there. All right. Um, shoot, I think I'm going to go for this one. But really, like, all I can do is make it 13-11 with bringing in the horse. What's this again? Yeah, that's, that's hopeless. This one is probably hopeless. <laughs> That's actually not hopeless right there. And if I manage to pull off, I can bring in a horse to make it 7 6. And if I win, I would get their weapon, which would be quite nice. So, do I want to go for the 7 6 and get a weapon, or the 13 11 and also get a weapon, but also get iron? Uh, and th getting this one is better at protecting my city and my gold, because it would be, uh, yeah, because that's kind of a threat right there. But, uh, th I think this would be huge to actually get as well, though. Hmm. All right, I'm going to go for this one. Who knows? I might be able to pull off both. Obviously, this is not guaranteed, and the, <laughs> the odds are still slightly against me. Okay, hold on to your butts. Get ready to cheerlead. Succeed, 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 succeed. <laughs> That's so stupid when you chant it. Ah, oh, repulse. Ah. Oh. oh well. So much for my lucky streak. And my horsey is dead. Okay, it's up to him to beat me down now. Uh, gotta, gotta stand my ground here. We must stand our ground. Just hope he doesn't get the damn city. Oh, he's going for the gold. Shoot. Okay. Repulse, repulse, repulse. Oh, I'm goldless. Okay, that's bad. <laughs> if I haven't made it clear the whole game, I'm saying, I don't know if he gets the city too. Oh man, that's gonna hurt. Repulse, repulse, repulse. Oh. Okay. That's terrible. All right. In case there was any doubt, that's terrible. You can build two cities right now and, and go for the win. Shoot, I thought I was doing well. 
I'll have to take one city. It's the only hope. Just like last game, except I was in a terrible position last time. All right, so that cluster in the northeast is super uber protected. I have to hope I can get something else. Um, well... Let's do some force counts. So I, I probably my best bet to try to take this city and by taking this one first, this territory first to make my odds better. Uh, yeah, these ones are kind of hopeless. Shoot, gonna lose again. But one fun thing is I could actually <laughs> make a boat and put it say right here. And then that could aid in the attack, I think. I'm not super clear on exactly how boats work, but I think I could do that. It would add two, I believe. And then I could also bring in, um, say, this horse from the rear, and it would even the odds if I if I understand how it works correctly regarding the boat. That would give me a 50-50 shot at being able to launch the attack that'll save the game right here. And as it is, what was this one again? Yeah, so it would be really nice to have this territory plus the weapon. That's a difference of four helping me instead of hurting me. So it would be 10 to 9 if I could manage to pull off this circled territory. And also I could bring in a, um, a horse. So, even on, so basically I could make it even odds, 50-50, I think, if I understand the boats correctly, and then another 50-50 if I get the first one, which basically gives me a 25% chance of saving the game right here if I if my math is correct. Two, two coin flips in a row landing in your favor. I believe that's 25%. Uh, but right now we're only in development, so I'm getting ahead of myself. I could, um, oh yeah, I can build weapons too, of course. But he's going to do... This. He already did his development. Right, right, right. Okay, so I'm going to build a weapon. Actually, that's... Yeah, if I put a weapon right here, that helps me quite a bit, actually. That's another three in my favor. I think is there, is there somehow any better way to plan this? Better place to put the weapon, or... Oh, shipment is still a thing that's going to happen. Um, okay. Now, why that could matter is right now, this weapon here is only going to help me in my, pro pro my proposed attack to here. But what I could do is I could ship this weapon here. If I can draw my arrow. And therefore, it will help in both attacks. And then also, I can put a weapon somewhere else to aid in... Uh, the first attack, perhaps I could put the weapon here. All right, I'm going to do that. We're going to put a weapon right there. Also, putting a weapon in the eastish area will bolster my strength where he's starting to creep in for sure. Okay. Oh. I can still make another one? Oh, oh that was all with gold, right? Okay. I'm still a little confused about how some of this resource stuff works, unfortunately. Shoot, maybe I should just put another one right here. Then I won't be shipping, but... I'm oh, sorry, I'm drawing arrows crazily. Um... Thinking, thinking, thinking. I'm like the computer, blip, 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 blip. Yeah, I really, I really got to maximize the chances of winning this one battle here first. So I think it's, I think it's, I think it's reasonable to put a weapon here, even if I don't use any clever shipping trips. I could, I actually could move a, for my shipping trick, I could move a horse forward. But can I move one forward in such a manner that would aid in both of these attacks I want to plan? Not unless I can get it like right here, I think. So probably not. But I could move a horse like here. Okay, so weapon, let's just do it right here. 
Uh, let's see if my boat insanity will actually work. I'm not entirely sure it will. Available convert selection, yes. Which body of water? <laughs> this one. <laughs> oh, I could have put a... Oh, I don't have enough money for... I, it, it, it's fine what I did with weapons, but if I had money for an extra weapon, I could have even put one in the territory with the boat, and then that could have shipped the weapon in. I can make another wet boat, too. I have so much timber, I feel like I might as well. And actually, now there is a an external coast to worry about, right? Because we got these guys. So in the future, I could potentially do something like that. Maybe I'll put the boat on my pasture, because that way I could bring a horse over, too. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm going to last that long, but... It's worth a shot, I guess. I have so much timber. I guess I'll save the rest of the timber, though. All right. That's my development. This is going to be exciting if I can pull it off. He's a, Fortunately, he's producing so much, though, that he's going to... Next turn, he's going to be able to build a couple more cities, and it's going to be... going to be difficult to keep pace. Oh, he's not making any timber anymore, though, because I took it all. So that's good. He actually can't make cities. Huh. Oh, wait, can you build a city with four gold if you have it? I think you can. Yeah, I think you can buy an old gold city, unfortunately. Come on, horsey, spread around. Spread like the wind. Okay. He's going to ship something. Probably moving that weapon. Bum, 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 bum. Nope. All right, I want to ship something. I think I want to just move a horsey to the front of where I'm going to make my first attack. So I'll just put it, um, I'm trying to think if it matters much. If I put it here or here, probably doesn't matter much. He's going to attack first, unfortunately. <laughs> that could totally destroy my plans if he manages to dig into my territory very well. Somehow I didn't even consider that, but what can I do? Let's we'll just see what he does. Hopefully with all these weapons and horses I have on the front line, they, I should be pretty well protected. He's thinking, thinking, clunk, 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 clunk. What are you doing, man? Plan attack. Going for that one. Okay, defense eight, but he's going to bring force. This is probably the horse with the weapon from the city. Uh, I mean, it would suck if I lose, but it's really weakening the city there. Oh, let's go do the repulse chant. Repulse, 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 repulse. Yeah, he's down a horse and a weapon. <laughs> Thanks for making my life easier, dude. All right. Now, still, though, he's long term, I'm still probably screwed because he can outbuild me with city. But I am wondering if there's somehow I could. No, I got to just focus on the, my plan. My plan from before is still the best one. But let's see what the odds are right now here without. Yeah, look, since he lost the horse and the weapon, it's actually already pretty good odds. I mean, it's still against me, but I could bring in a, you know, Bring in reinforcements, but uh, I think my original plan is still the best to go. But what I'm thinking is, if there's somehow I just to, just to go through the possibility, what if I use my first attack to get this one and I pull off the win? Probably not too likely, but I could do that. Then what if I did like a one-two punch and took tried to take a city? That would probably a second city. That would probably be a real hail mary. But <laughs> I could bring in a boat and make it. I think that would be 
12 to 4. Probably not worth doing that. Although if I managed to take 2-3, that would be fantastic. I just That's probably just not realistic at all. So let's, do, let's stick with the original plan. And go for this one. Which is now 17 to 9 in my favor. Because of his own stupidity. And I can still bring in the boat, I believe. It'll be good to at least figure out how this boat works. I keep thinking it's going to work how I hope it does. Spring forces boat from here. This boat, yes. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> it didn't even have to move. It's, it's aiming its cannon the other way or something. So 19 to 9. Wow. Um, you can't bring other reinforcements apparently. So I can't bring a horse in just to make it um, just to bring in the horse. Yeah, I might actually want to re rethink that then. Because um, putting a horse on the front line here might be better for the next attack. And for just the strengthening my front line in general. Although, on the other hand, I'm not sure I want to leave this. Well. I don't know. It doesn't matter much as far as this area. But what about a horse like this guy here? Maybe this guy here. I'm a little concerned about this eastern area being not so great. But I could bring in this one. He's not really doing anything. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Probably better than, than bringing in the boat. It'll, it, it doesn't help my odds quite as much. It'll be, I think, 18 to 9. But just getting the horse in the front line, I think, is better. So let's do replan. Yeah, so it'll be 18 to 9 instead of... Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, it'll be, um, I don't know, one worse. <laughs> I'm forgetting my, my math. Okay. 18 to 9. This is do or die. The odds are greatly in my favor, but I've, we've seen crazier things happen. So here goes. Suspense. Yay! Success. Okay. Do or die. Part two. What are we looking at at the moment? All right. I like those odds. 14 to 6 in my favor. Shoot, if it wasn't do or die, I might just take their gold, though. But it's do or die, so. I'm really... Now I'm just frightened about next turn though. The city building is gonna do it might just be impossible to, to win anyway. But this is this is cool regardless. This is feels like heroic sorta. Of. <laughs> um I could bring in a horse carrying a weapon from right here, but again I kinda of wanna have that eastern coast pretty well defended. So I might just bring in say this random horse over here or something. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll do that. Just so I can, you know, refocus on the eastern side later. It's just still going to be long-term like a Hail Mary, <laughs> but let's do it. Bring in just one, one horsey. Okay, we got 15 to 6. Let's roll the dice. I could just lose right here. I did all this planning and excitement is for naught. <laughs> Don't lose here. That would suck. All right. The game has been saved for now. Saved from the jaws of defeat. I'm just really scared of his development phase right here. Part of it, I'm not entirely sure how his production work, uh, the development works. Is it... You can spend four gold on a city alternatively to spending one of everything. I think that's the case. In which, in which case, you can build one more city this turn. So I really need to focus on claiming yet another city. Because he's probably going to put it in a place where I can't reach the, um, the city he's going to build. Which means i got to really claim, I guess, one of these. It's going to be really, a really hard turn. But at least we live to see another turn, right? 
she, she probably just going to cluster it here again or something. It's going to just really compound all the bonuses. Defense bonuses. So I have to really think, what can I do to win up here? Anything I could possibly do. Got to be able to take another city this turn. So I'm thinking just another weapon. And I just have to place it well. I guess, um... Shoot, where am I going to be going? I guess we'll see what he, where he places his new city. Maybe he puts it somewhere stupid like here. I doubt he will, though. Uh, so I guess I have to assume not not knowing where he's going to place his city because I have to build now. I go first. That I'm going to probably attack that one. But let's do all the math. Force count here is 12 to 2 in their favor. This one here is 15 to 1 in their favor. Okay, I'm going to need a real hair Mary. That one's 13. All right, so it's going to be... I'm going to say it's going to be this little peninsula guy, 12 to 2. So I guess I'm just putting a weapon, um, yeah, up there somewhere. And I could also attack with a boat. I could use shipment to, um, here's something I can do to help my odds. I can bring a horse carrying a weapon over here. And then when I'm doing the attack, the ship carries all, all three, uh, well, the ship carries the other two guys. That'll add six over here. And if I have a weapon here as well, that'll be a plus nine compared to what it is now. So it'll become uh, 12 to 11 in their favor. That's that's definitely doable. It's still not great, but that's definitely in the realm of possibility, at least. Okay, so I guess we're building a weapon up there. And now I'm going to be debating all the possibilities about here versus here to place the weapon. Uh, <laughs> everything's so critical now. Uh, I guess as far as that goes, if I place a weapon here, it protects more areas because I'm adjacent to more. But I think maybe this area here is more at risk of attack later. And then if he claims that weapon, it would be worse. So I'm thinking of putting the weapon right here. Thanks for staying up late to watch me play this crazy old game, guys. It's really a good game. And this is going to be fun for a player. You're all sitting at, you know, you're all hot seating it and, uh, you know, negotiating with each other. There's actually a trade phase in this game that we're skipping. So you could trade goods with each other. Um, yeah, it's all, all, all fun and games. Uh, oh, 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 what if I, uh, oh. If I put a weapon here, then for oh, I, I, okay. shipping is already part of my strategy. I can't, can't do two shipping. All right, fine. Putting it here. Do I want to build another boat for the heck of it? I feel like I might as well. Um, and where? I'll put another one here in case I need to ship a horse with a boat later. I don't know. End development. All right, you can build a city. Unfortunately, you can you can spend four gold on one. Like I thought, I, it's good to know how this stuff works. Yeah, so if he had some timber, he could possibly build another one by spending one of everything as well. But he doesn't, so he's got to go the four gold route. And then he can probably build um a weapon or two too. I think actually, right? Or the weapons all. Yeah, I think you can all you can buy a weapon with two gold or a timber and iron. So you put a city there, that one's gonna be impossible for me to take. Building a weapon with Okay, okay. That's not actually gonna help him in the fight that I'm planning. But he is he's making another weapon too, shoot. And that one is helping in the fight that I'm planning. He can make another one too. Oh he's saving his money, thankfully. Alright, this it's uh, this is gonna be it now. Or do we have ship shipment first, and then then it'll be do or die. But look at all the nice production I have going now, except for, there's a strong exception, actually, of lacking gold. And the horses are breeding like mad. It's kind of fun to see the, the spread out of all the horse areas. New horse born here. I've got 12 horses to my name. He has none. And now I'm considering, even if I pull off the Hail Mary and win this turn, he can once again build a city next turn with all that gold going on. Jeez, 
Build two cities next turn. Oh, shoot. Evil portents prevent shipment. What? Oh, evil portents? Oh, there goes my plan. Uh, well, all right. This isn't great all of a sudden. He built a weapon there, which I wasn't, think, wasn't considering. Plus, I can't bring in my weapon. But I can bring in the boat with a horse, just not with a weapon as well. Because of evil portents. All right. Once again, we're faced with do or die stuff. So what's it looking like now? I'm afraid to look. 5 to 15, and I can add... I can only add 3? Oh, man. And no shipment is really hurting, huh? Okay. What else can I do? Um... Is there any way I can pull this off? An alternate strategy? Not really. I mean, I could try to get this gold thing first, but it doesn't help in the ensuing battle. <laughs> it could help if I made this my second battle, but the odds are going to be terrible still. So what are the odds here right now, just for the heck of it? <laughs> so I could, you know, take down this... If I take down this one, it would be uh, 20 to 2 instead, which is still horrible. But I could then bring in the horse with the weapon, like so, and add 4. So it would be 20 to 6. Still hard. I think my best bet is still to go for this guy, and it, and it has become a Hail Mary situation, unfortunately. All right. Let's Hail Mary it. Anyway, I can get another weapon up there. No, because they have to move into the space. Can't move adjacent. All right, it's probably the end of me, but let's give it our best. 5 to 15, we're going to bring a ship carrying a horse. No way to do ship, weapon, and horse. Keep thinking maybe if I plan some if I had to plan something a little better, maybe I could bring a weapon here too, but I don't know. Fifteen to eight, that's about it's slightly better than two to one at least. Any other way I can play this? I've already exhausted all the possibilities. Uh what for the heck of it? What what if I tried let's do a replan. What if I tried to attack here and then go to the stockpile? <laughs> Is that feasible? It might. It's not going to be good odds. There's a small chance it might be better odds than what I had, though. If I got this one first, the odds are in my favor, and I and I could bring in a horse with a weapon. So these guys come in, and suddenly it is um ten to five, which is great odds, right? So that's good. Obviously, I need, I need the second step, which is to get the stockpile city. To get their stockpile, too, would be tremendous, though. Anyway, let's see what that would look like. So right now, this is a, a horrible 0 to 10. But if I ha if I claim this, this guy here, this territory here, and I have a horse and a weapon, it suddenly becomes 10 to 5. One for the territory one for the horse, three for the weapon. And could I march in anybody to help? Yes, I could. So that would be... Let me think this through, though. What could I bring in to help? It would probably just be a horse with nothing else, I think, given my current situation. Uh, yeah, it would be... Um, I can't see a way to get a horse with a weapon all the way up there. So it would probably be like, for example, just this horse. And then it would become 10 to 7. And I that's my best odds. And if I pull it off, I get the stockpile, which would mean I get all of his 8 gold or whatever as well. That's the way to do it. Wow, I'm glad I, I just did the math right there. 
There's no way to get a ship over, obviously, not on the coast. I keep thinking there's gotta be some way I can get a weapon and boat weapon and horse over there just really isn't unfortunately. Alright. We need to pray just to make it today. <laughs> let's do it. What are, let's, let me review the stockpile. If I get the stockpile, I get all that stuff. I get eight iron, two coal, and eight gold. I've got the game in the bag if I can pull it. Well, I shouldn't get too cocky about that, but I think I would have the game in the bag. So it's, it's going to come down to a 10... I'm surprised people are leaving right now. This is where it's getting really excited in my view. But uh, I guess it is late as well. Anyway, so yeah, if I can pull off this thing that's in my favor, I forget the odds right here. Then I have a 10 to 7 against me. And that 10 to 7 is better than what I had here. And then plus I would get the stockpile if I pull it off. Gotta do it. Now, I'm, mostly what I'm thinking about now is which horse and weapon do I want to bring in. Um, yeah, this, this is not even guaranteed. I gotta remember that. But what, else, what other choice do I have, right? All right, here goes nothing. So for my choice of horse plus weapon, it's this one versus this one, essentially. I think it's more crucial to leave this one around for defense on this side of the board, maybe. Maybe-ish. Let's just, let's go with the other one. Horse here. Pick up the weapon. Pick up the weapon in his mouth and go here. All right. 10 to 5. If I can pull off a 10 to 5 in my favor, I can attempt the 10 to 7 against me. If I pull that off, I'm going to be cheering so loud my, my wife is going to yell at me that I'm uh, being too loud. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm ready to be disappointed right here, though. This is, like, pretty crazy, you know. Let's do it. Holding my breath. Yeah. <sighs> Okay, that's step one. I can let go. I can exhale now. All right, here comes the big one. <laughs> it's crazy. And again, I wish there was the some way. I keep looking like there's some possible way I could bring in a weapon with the horse, and there, there just is. And I have to bring in a, a lone, a lone horse, which is probably going to be this guy here. All right, your mind stockpile. <laughs> again. Oh, did I say nine to seven? It's actually nine to nine to six. Maybe I did say nine to six. Uh, God, it's gotta be. I wish there was. There's no way. There's no. Can I get a boat over there? I'm like, I'm just. I just want to win this so much. I'm thinking of impossible things. I just gotta go and do it. Here comes the horse. Nine to six. Nine to six. Do or die. <laughs> if I were rolling dice physically right now, you ever like play a game like Risk and then like, you have this do or die situation? It doesn't matter what the game is. Any, you, know, you like roll the dice very vigorously and you let the suspense build and you do this for a while. That's what I'm doing right now in my head. But here goes nothing. This is it. <gasps> oh! Oh, that would have been epic. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's that. Game over. He's going to bother to attack me, too, just to rub it in. He he beat me and then some. That's sad. That would have been, <laughs> that <would've> been awesome. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been awesome? All right, he took something over there, too, to rub it in. <laughs> that would have been so good. Ah, damn. But alas, red is the victor once again.
Now I'm sad. Oh well, that's pretty good. Yeah, you gotta admit. Uh, I'm debating if I want to give it one more shot or not. It is pretty late. Um, I probably shouldn't. Let me know in the chat though if you want to see one more. If anybody's still chatting, maybe I could find a map that's quick or something. Is there such a thing? <laughs> with the map maker for fun. Hey, you can draw them. So you can um you can tell the game to generate the map and give it parameters or you can just do this la 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 draw some territories. This is pretty cool. Isn't it really cool? I think it's cool. How do you um you can add a cell but how do you tell it to move on to the next territory? I don't get that part. I don't even know how I go down to the exit. Oh, shoot. I'm trapped here forever. <laughs> you can make a fictional map into a Lord of the Conquest map. You could take something from Lord of the Rings or something. Uh, you could take, you could zoom in on your neighborhood or like your uh, your state. Maybe you could have the different counties in your state. Uh, it's pretty neat. But yeah, I don't know how to get to the freaking exit. Um must be some key. It's not. A, it's not the button. It's not holding the button. It's not holding the button and moving the stick. It's got to be some key. But but what? Hopefully the manual actually tells you. It's annoying that you would actually have to refer to a manual to figure out how to do that. Uh, press fire while moving the cursor to add cells. Remove a cell. Highlight the option and then press. But yeah. But how do you go down and highlight the damn option? You can't move the cursor down below. I mean, maybe this is a sign I should just add, just, just end the stream. <laughs> hmm. An area contain can contain nine to ninety nine cells. A map must you could actually make nine nine cell uh territory. You could if you wanted to get creative, you could make a, a big grid of just three by threes. I mean, it wouldn't be a very interesting layout, but it's kind of, kind of, it kind of makes me start to to think like about different shapes and how how they would play out in the game. If you had a grid of three by three, you would only have uh, in the corners you would have two adjacent, and in the middle you would have four adjacent, obviously. So yeah, I have no idea how to get out of this. Maybe F one or something like that. Do, 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 do. Uh, I don't know. All right, I guess that's it for tonight. Uh, how can it, how can this part be harder? I'm gonna I'll show, I'm, I'm gonna just read this in the freaking manual. Let's put it up right here. Map maker. Select use the map maker from the main menu to create your own maps or modify computer computer generated maps. Each territory or area must have a minimum of nine cells. A map must contain between twenty and forty eight areas. Each area may contain 9 to 99 cells. 99. A map in progress can only be saved as a work. A map maker keeps track of the number of cells in an area and the number of areas in a work. It will not complete an area that is too small or save a map that has less than 20 areas. You can load a work saved on disk and continue working on it. If you have a map saved to disk, you can load it, transfer it work to a work, modify it, save it as a map, select from the following options, new work, draw... Start a new map from scratch using the following option. Draw a new area. The cursor appears as a plus in the middle of the screen. Move cursor and use one of the following commands. For Atari and Commodore, which I'm on, add a cell. Press fire button while moving cursor to add cells. Remove a cell. Highlight option and then press button. It has, tells you... Oh, here we go. Space bar. Ah. Oh, oh. I think it's not working for me because I have spacebar mapped to the button. Ah. All right. So this is just kind of silliness at this point. Uh -huh. So I guess I would have to 
temporarily <laughs> remap my fire button to something else. Like, uh, I don't know. Um, I'll just say Z for now. Or F, how about? That, that explains so much. All right. Well, what a neat game, huh? It's a really good one. And yeah, there's a board game. And you can even get uh, Borderlands, is the most recent version of the board game, which is roughly 10 years old, I think. And they gave it a steampunk aesthetic for some reason, because that was a rage at the time. I don't particularly like that. Um, you can always uh, dig up the, the original game on eBay. 1982 Borderlands. Oh, but this is cool, too. Uh, some, I wonder if anybody's remade this or thought about remaking it. This might be a fun game to play. You know, uh, just as a mobile app or, or you know, just an, an internet-enabled game, even if it's on your PC or whatever. Um, I'm tempted to try another one, but there needs to be a way you can make a game quick. Like, and I don't think there really is unless I just say Cities to Win 3 and Beginner or something like that. And uh, I really should just end the stream. But that's, so that's it, I guess. So thanks for hanging in with me. It looks like I got two concurrent viewers at this point. Thank you for waiting, for, for joining me this long. And yeah, what a cool game. Um, the AI is tough. Even though I was on level three of nine, I got beaten, so that kind of sucked. I, I, that would have been so awesome if I did manage to pull off that Hail Mary at the end. That would have been that would have been an epic moment right there. I would have put that in a YouTube short. Sometimes I make YouTube shorts of, of special moments that happen on the streams. But yeah, that was just a disappointment. <laughs> but definitely a fun game. And thanks for joining me, whoever joined. I've only seen chats from Ryan, who is gone, and Eric Johnson. So if, I guess if you're still there, Eric, thanks for watching. Good night. And thanks to anonymous people for watching as well. So I'll see you next time, possibly this Saturday, for my Saturday night gaming stream. Uh, Rob Bob will not be available, so it's just me. Um, maybe I'll continue the game book I had in progress for a couple months called Citadel of Chaos. I don't know, really. I'll figure it out. But if you like this at all, please please press the like button. By the way, I've only gotten one like. I kind of use the likes to gauge what people like to watch. And it's always good for the channel to get likes as well. But that's all. See you next time. Take care, guys. Bye.